Okay, hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome everybody, one and all, to Tekking Plays Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories or Sealed Memories or whatever version you want uh, to go with. Uh, let me know on the audio. Uh, it's nice to see everybody back. Um, last night's stream was a very big success. I wanted to thank every single person that uh, stopped by there. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so we're bring, we're gonna hopefully finish the game up tonight. I think we can do it, uh, especially with the cheat code that we used. So haha, <laughs> we got that. Um, but yeah, uh, as always, I'm just messing with the audio right now before we get started. Uh, should be okay. Most of the settings are the same from last night. Uh, I was listening to the stream this morning, and everything seemed to come out okay. I will try not to yell as much in this one, uh, but no promises. In fact, that I'm I'm not I'm going to yell at some point in the stream. Like it's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, you got this, bro. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, teching, it's time for my OPM video, I think. Well, maybe. Maybe we'll do a One Punch Man video. Hell yeah, one of my favorite childhood games I didn't know how to play as a kid. Also, first stream. Yeah, because this game does not hold your hand with that. I mean, it's it just throws you into the game, and it's like, you figure it out, you know? I mean, there's an instruction booklet with it, but if you don't have it, then uh, you're done. Uh, let's see here. Yelling is fine. Well, people can hear me, so that's good. Hardest Yu-Gi-Oh! game ever. Oh, let me turn on the uh, audio from the game, so that'll actually be a good comparison here. Alright, so uh, there's the game audio versus my own audio. Let me know how that matches up. Sam Samurai video. The Samurai Samurai Jack. Nobody needs the manual. You remember your medieval game reviews? I do. It's actually been a while. It's been a hot minute since I played medieval. I have the remake on my uh, PlayStation 4. Um, but I should honestly... I wish they would have done a remake of, PS of uh, Medieval 2. Kind of like how they did Spyro. They did the remakes of all three of the Spyro games. I really wish they would have just done Medieval 1 and 2. There's only two Medieval games. I mean, Medieval Resurrection on the PSP. They could have done that one too, though. So there you go. Three Spyro games remastered. Three Crash Bandicoot uh, games remastered. Why didn't they remaster all three Medieval games is what I'm asking. Whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, um, everybody seems to be in. I mean, we, we're getting more viewers, of course, uh, but uh, I think we're just going to get started. So, uh, a couple of things that I wanted to go over. Uh, as a recap of last time, we defeated the uh, the tournament. We went back to the present, and we defeated Pegasus and Isis and uh, Kaiba, of course. Um, you know, and after that, we collected all the Millennium items in, like, a card format. And then we went back to Ancient Egypt, where we're at right now. And, uh, we don't really know what's going on yet, so we're gonna explore that in campaign mode. Um, but before we get to that, let me go through our deck. So last time, I utilized a cheat code to get every single, uh, card in the game. And I actually, before I even continue, I have to bring something up. I did not... I, I, it might have just be an error, maybe I had to restart the game, but I noticed there were a lot of cards missing last night when I was making my deck, even after I did the cheat code. Like, I remembered, like, certain trap cards were missing, all the ritual spells were missing. So, when I restarted the game today to just redo my deck and get everything ready for tonight, um, those cards are actually there now. So, we got all the equipped spells, but then we have, boom, all the ritual cards here. So we can summon ritual monsters like here's the Garma Sword Oath. Sacrifice the Ashura's arm and the sword wielder to summon. Oh, okay, so wait a second. Sacrifice Ashura's arm and the sword wielder. So we're just sacrificing Zoro to summon the Garma Sword, I guess. You know, because Zoro has a technique called Ashura. So we have all the ritual monsters. Uh, and all the trap cards that are included. So we have Widespread Ruin, which I did not put in my deck yet, but this is easily the strongest trap card in the game, where when you attack, no matter what the card is, uh, Widespread Ruin will destroy it. There's no set limit on life points or attack points or anything like that. Um, yeah. The pronunciation of Egypt of Isis is actually Isis. Well, I say Isis because that's how I say it. That's how most people say it. I think I've heard, I've, I've never heard anybody else say it. It probably is pronounced differently, but yeah. And also nobody really knows how ancient Egyptian was spoken. Kind of the same thing with Latin. Anyway, um, 
So yeah, we have access to every single card. Because I think that total up there, the chest, it said, I think last night it was only at like 10,000. And now it's at like 14,000. So whatever, I, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. So I did rework our deck since we fought Kaiba. Uh, Kaiba was sort of a meme deck because we really wanted to Exodia uh, OTK him, and which we did. Uh, so we did that, and we also had like uh, a lot of Yugi's cards in there from the anime. Uh, you know, Dragon Capture Jar was thrown in there just to capture his blue eyes. Like everything worked out perfectly in that duel, which was beautiful. But I decided to uh, redo some stuff just to make it not so overpowered for this stage in the game. Like I said, uh, because I have access to every card, it would be very easy for me to throw in like three Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragons and then just call it a day. Uh, I, I could do that, but I didn't want to. So this is our deck that we're bringing to the table uh, as we begin the third part of this game. So our strongest monster is Sangha of the Thunder. Now this is one of the Jinns or the genies or the gods, however, the golem that says golem here. I've heard the pieces of the Gate Guardian called Jinns, genies, gods, golems here. I mean, like, it's all over the place, but whatever. You can call them whatever you want. Um, I have all three pieces of the Gate Guardian in here. Will we be able to make the Gate Guardian, though? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, then we have Zoa, who's a really badass fiend. And we also have Metal Morph, which will turn him into Metal Zoa with 3,000 attack. Uh, Crab Turtle is a ritual in the real game. Uh, there is a ritual for him as well. It's just the cards don't look blue in the actual card. They're all normal monsters. Even if they're summoned using a ritual or if they're fusion summoned, they still look like vanilla monsters. Um, we have Garma Sword. I, I, I like a lot of these old school ritual monsters, you can tell. Like Garma Sword, Dokuo Rider, uh, Skull Guardian. I love those guys. Sui Jin. Water type, Dark Magician, of course, Yugi Staple, Summon Skull. I also have Red Eyes Black Dragon in here, where if you fuse Red Eyes with Summon Skull, you get Black Skull Dragon. And I also have uh, Meteor Dragon in here, where if you fuse uh, Red Eyes with Meteor Dragon, you get Meteor B Dragon, uh, Meteor Black Dragon, which is the strongest standalone card that you can win in the game, at least in the original version. Remember, we're playing on a modded version. We're playing mod 15, uh, where I think you can win any card. Um, but in the original game, the best monster you could possibly get was Meteor Black Dragon from just a drop. And it was very, very rare. Um, but yeah, it has 3,500 attacks, so that's why it's so powerful. Thunder Dragons, if you fuse them, just handy to make Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. I threw Labyrinth Wall in here um, to kind of stall out our opponents if we're in a tight bind. Uh, game audio needs lowered a bit. Okay, well, I can do that. Hold on. I can do that. All right, how about that? How are we doing? Um, okay, and so Bright Castle, these are really handy equip spells. Uh, these increase 500 attack for any monster. I was playing around with throwing in the Sword of Dark Destruction or the Legendary Sword, but the thing is, it's like, those cards only work on very specific monsters, and the text is horrible. So it'll be like, equip this sword to a warrior, but it doesn't work on every warrior. Equip this sword to a fiend, it doesn't work on every fiend. So it's like, screw that. Bright Castle, 500 attack and defense to any monster it gets added to. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, then we have Dragon Treasure, 500 extra points to any dragon monster. That'll come in handy. Magical Labyrinth. If um, I, I said this erroneously in the last episode. I said that if you equip this with Labyrinth Wall, it'll go up to 4,000 defense. It'll actually just go up to 3,500. So it's basically... A, a bright castle that only works on one card, but I threw it in here just for lols. I thought it would be funny um, Yeah, and bright castle is tune world uh, the shine palace was what the card was called when Pegasus used it So it's tune world. Yeah, uh, then we have Megamorph, which we actually won from Kaiba in the last duel So I wanted to throw that in here This increases any monster by two levels or a thousand attack and defense any monster doesn't matter what it is So we had to throw Megamorph in there Metal Morph is the card that'll change Zoa into Metal Zoa. I think it has an effect with a few other monsters, but I guess we'll see how that goes. 
Um, thoughts on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses. I played that as well back in the day, and I think I'm gonna play that as my next LP after this. Not, like, immediately. Like, we're not gonna play Duelist of the Roses, like, tomorrow. But, um, I do wanna play it at some point. And I think that's a PS2 game, and I do have a PS2 upstairs. Although, I do need, I need to get a new controller for it. I don't have a controller for my PS2. Uh, we actually put two Metal Morphs in there just to increase the likelihood of us getting it for Zoa. Uh, Mountain and Sogan are gonna be our field spells. Because uh, we have a lot of dragons. Uh, Mountain is probably one of the best because you have dragon, thunder, and wing beast. And that's perfect for our deck. Uh, Sogan is good for a lot of warriors. We have like Gaia and everybody, that, you know, and also Gaia the dragon champion. Um, so that'll, that'll be handy there. Uh, we have Spellbinding Circle. Although I think Gaia the dragon champion is a, classified as a dragon. So Mountain would work there. The Spellbinding Circle is really cool. It knocks all the opponent's monsters down by 500 attack and defense. So that'll be very handy. Swords of Revealing Light to stall for three turns. And yeah, uh, we have some other monsters in there too that I didn't talk about. But we'll just get into it as we go. Uh, that's what I did with my deck. This should be good until at least the final boss gauntlet. We might have some trouble here and there. I'm not saying this is going to be an instant win for every single, um, every single opponent we're going to get. But... Until the final boss gauntlet, which I might upgrade again when we get there, this will be pretty solid. So, uh, with that all being said, why don't you pull Exodia in every turn? Uh, because I think the Exodia thing was kind of fun. We used it against Kaiba. We might use it again, but I kind of want to show off other strategies. Metal Morph on Red Eyes. Red Eyes Metal Dragon. I'll try! I don't think it'll work, but I'll try. And it's a modded version, so even if it didn't work in the original, it might work here. So, let's get going. Let's hop back into the campaign and see what's up. Uh, let's see here. Hello, nameless bald man. All right. So we did all of this. Let's uh, leave the shop. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, a video summarizing the succession war in Hunter x Hunter. I actually planned that and I started looking into it. And there is so much shit going on in the succession war. It's one of the few videos I was actually intimidated by. And I actually put it aside and I'm like, this is too much, man. This is too much. But because it's so complex and no one else is like Liam did a really good video on it but going through every moving part oh god it would be such a undertaking but I might do it all right so this is the metropolis where we're going to be you know uh doing most of the stuff immediately like right now uh but we do have some other locations here like the shrine of glory where we arrived and uh there's pretty much nothing here looks like the ruins of a temple and that's it it's a very uninteresting place. And then the Valley of Kings, or the King's Valley, where we can go there right now. Actually, you know what? Let's go there now. King's Valley. Let's see what's up. I thought the game froze for a second. I was like, oh my god. And is there a train down here? That's a train whistle. Who is that? I can't see. I've been down in this cave for 30 years. None may enter the Valley of Kings. Leave! Oh, wait a minute. My prince, you're alive. It's been like five to ten years. I don't remember the exact passage. I am Sadin. For generations, my family has guarded this valley. Ah, so he's like Merrick's great, 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 great times 30 grandfather. There you go. Please rest assured that I've kept Hei Shin out of this palace, my, my prince. Or out of this valley, my prince. I'm sorry about what happened to the pharaoh and the queen. Okay, I guess they're dead. I guess I guess Hei Shin killed them. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that really sucks. Isn't that the whole reason we broke the puzzle to try to save our parents and they just got killed anyway? That sucks. Nameless and, and you know, unknown parents that we've never seen. The vile ones have taken over this land. But now, now that you're alive, there is hope. You alone can defeat his entire army. All right, uh, I guess we should go see our parents. The remains of the Pharaoh and the Queen are not here. I am sorry to say that Haitian would not allow it. He pissed on their corpses and then threw them into the courtyard where buzzards picked them clean. It was, uh, it was a rather difficult thing to witness. I'm glad you weren't here for that. Anyway, anything else I can help you with? <laughs> um... Yeah, let's go to the Forbidden Ruins. That's the place Hei Shin broke into at the beginning of the game. We gotta get some of that Forbidden Egyptian magic to take him on. Simon Muron said it was here? I'm sorry, but I've never seen such a place. There are so many tombs for royalty, nobody knows which tunnel leads to where. If there is a Forbidden Tomb, I don't know where it is. My apologies, good prince. I suck as a tour guide. Anything else? 
Uh, I guess not. If you require my services, you can always find me here. Well, you've been so useful so far, Sadine. All right. So, well, that uh, didn't do that didn't go great, but uh, I guess we have to head back to the metropolis now and uh, see what's going on. I'm actually gonna head back to the hiding card shop. Because now, we didn't get a chance to do it last time, but now we can actually duel Jono 2 and Teyana 2, uh, who are going to be upgraded versions of the original Jono and Teyana. It's been a few years since we've been gone, so they picked up some new cards, some new strategies. Hey, Barry, you're looking good. Well, thank you, Jono. Want a duel? Absolutely, Jono. Let's do it. First duel of it. I've been streaming for 15 minutes, and this is the first duel, so let's just dive right in. What services are you offering, Sadim? <laughs> what exactly are you doing here? A massage, perhaps? Mm. All right. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's just open this up with Mystical Sand, a card that we had to fuse before, but now I just have the raw card for. Uh, but once again, Mystical Sand, not very useful. Uh, she's actually one of the weaker cards in my deck. I just put her in there just because I like her. She's, she's hot, okay? I mean, like, yeah, the green hair. The green hair just does it. All right. Uh, now let's throw out uh, Mikazuki no Yaiba. Mikazuki no Yaiba. Where I think uh, Demon is in there somewhere because I think that's... Uh, how do you say Demon Slayer in Japanese again? I think Yaiba is in there. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, Mystical Sand, the face down. Oh, see? Jono busted out his red eyes black dragon on the first turn now he was kind of stupid he was dirt stupid and put it in defense mode but that could have easily killed mystical sand tell us a story i don't know what story do you want to hear um all right uh once upon a time uh, a bunch of people invaded egypt uh they had horses and chariots and wrecked the egyptians asses so the Egyptians took their horses and built their own chariots and came back and beat the shit out of them. They were called the Hyksos, and uh, they actually ruled Egypt for a little spell there, but um, didn't last very long because the Egyptians are just badass. All right, that's Aqua Dragon. Uh, anybody that's powerful against this guy. He is sun. Oh, so Mystical Sand is powerful. Yeah, Giltia. Suck it, Giltia. Tell, tell us the story of the Dollar Tree Guardians. Well, there's a video on my channel for that, so you can go check it out. Kimetsu no Kaiba. Kimetsu no Yaiba. Kimetsu no Kaiba. It's all of Demon Slayer, except the main character is Kaiba. I just want you to imagine that. Just picture Demon Slayer. Everything's the same. He has the same abilities and everything. Nezuko is still there. It's just that he's Kaiba. Ooh, super war lion. He's like a were lion werewolf yeah let's do a 3d battle with these guys anyone stoned here tonight i know i am not no uh i did just eat at a uh, nice little greek uh, uh greek diner it was very nice i had a uh, uh i had a steak and chicken hoagie kind of thing and it was very delicious and i also had some fried zucchini um there was a greek term for it but i forget it. it was very complicated Oh, yeah, Mokuba will be Nezuko. That works great. Mokuba's in the basket with, like, the thing in his mouth. Yeah. That came out wrong. But you, you, if you've seen Demon Slayer, you know. I also appreciate that the Super War Lion had enough wherewithal to wear shorts. Can we talk about something really quick? The Incredible Hulk. Let's talk about the Incredible Hulk. What is the Incredible Hulk shorts made out of? Because, like... They must be made out of, like, adamantium or vibranium or something, right? Or wapo metal or something. All right, Jono2. Um, if you led with that red eyes, you might have actually gotten somewhere, but, yeah. But then I got high. I feel like that's from something. Leo, what's that from? But then I got high. That sounds very familiar. That sounds like it's from, like, a Key and Peel sketch or something. Uh, that sucks. Oh! Man, we would have gotten Summon Skull anyway from Jono. Good, now I don't feel bad about putting him in my deck. Metabat, Metabat, Metabat. Uh, a lot of these other cards suck, but uh, we would have gotten we would have gotten a uh, Summon Skull. So there you go. Mr. Fantastic made it for him. That sounds like it'd be legit. It's a song. Okay. All right. It just sounded like it's from a comedy sketch. What's your favorite Key and Peele sketch? I have so many. 
The one that I really like, and every time I've showed it to somebody else, they always feel like it's eh, is the one with just the college bowl, where they're just going through all the different- Hingle McCringleberry! You know, like, the, just the funny names. Every person I've showed that to does not find it funny. I'm always laughing my ass off, you know? It's just like, you know, Hingle McCringleberry, and just like- Fudge! And I'm like, I think that's like the funniest shit ever. It's just like, all it is is just 20 funny names in a row. That's all it is. But I think it's fucking hilarious. The football pep talk, that's a good one too. That's a good one. Double cross cops, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also like the pawn shop one. The pawn shop one. Hey, uh, you got any, uh, got any, uh, M80s? We have shotgun shells, but sir, whatever you're planning, I would ha highly discourage it. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Oh, robo-teching. Shit. Hold on. Okay. How is it now? Do I sound like a robot? <laughs> I mean, I actually am a robot. I I'm just letting you know. But I just want to make sure that it's it sound okay now. Thank you. It's good. Okay. Well, hey, we had a lot of problems last night. We'll have a problem here. Back to it. What's up, Barry? Feel like a duel? Anytime with you, Tayana. Be warned, I'm good. Ooh. All right, teching used Metal Morph. I always loved Bandit Keef's deck, like the Barrel Dragon, the Slot Machine, Metal Zoa. Always some pretty cool cards from Bandit Keef. Pendulum Machine was cool, that giant Scythe Blade. Aw, oh, damn. We got some really good cards here now. Holy shit. All right. Oh, I don't even know how to start this. Okay, I'm going to lay Kaze Jin down. And I also have Brachio Raidus. I tried to get as many... Um, Oh, the racist zombies? Um, that does sound familiar. Yeah, I might have seen that. Ha ha! Orion the Battle King? You are not the real Orion. What's my real name? Uh, I am teching bot 37394. Oh, oh, we have it right here. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna throw out Zoa right now. And uh, we'll use Metal Morph later if we're in a in a in a bind. What about Keith's finger gun? Yeah, his real name is Jesse. No, but I have a lot of friends named Jesse. Coincidentally, Key and Peel the hat up. Oh, the hat one is great. Oh, I also love the uh, the the landlord. The landlord sketch is so fucking funny. Just like. <laughs> It's like, why does he keep getting smaller the more you mention him? Because I didn't want to alarm y'all. He is disturbingly small. You know? <laughs> oh, man. I love Key and Peele. I'm going to go see uh, Nope. Uh, you know, his new movie coming out. I really want to go see Nope. Oh, my God. Did I win? I think I just won. Well, we didn't even have to bust out Metal Zoa. Yeah, no, we're not overpowered. We're not overpowered. We're totally not overpowered. The Civil War sketch. I don't know if I ever saw the Civil War sketch. Um. <laughs> you won against a character that has a 100% win rate in the anime. I guess that means we have 200%. You're too good at this game. Yeah. Duelist of the Roses next. Uh, yes. But not right now. Now it's Forbidden Memories. Nice to see you, Barry. How about a duel? Man, Villager 1, you have been... Thank you for holding down the fort while I've been away, Vill uh, Villager 1. You are the sole reason. Excuse me. You are the sole reason that Haitian could not have taken over this place. Villager 1, with his mighty buff body, defeated him in his little cap that he has. You know what? Fuck it. Let's duel. So there isn't an upgraded version of Villager 1. It's not like he has a better deck or anything. It's not like Villager 1-2 or Villager 1-3 or anything like that. It's the same Villager 1 from the beginning. 
But you know what? He protected the people of Egypt by himself. I think he deserves nothing but our best. And we're going to give it to him. Dark Magician, let's start this off strong. Here we go. Oh, he's fusioning. He might actually know a thing or two. Oh my god! He has summoned the legendary cock! Roach Knight! Oh no! We're gonna have to bust out Mikazuki Yaiba! Mikazuki Mi no Yaiba! 3D battle with a cock, Roach Knight! Dun, 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 dun! I'm just gonna try to drag this game out as long as possible. Uh, can you play... Oh, can you give us a Yu-Gi-Oh! 101? Oh, he looks like he has that thing from Star Trek. Like the, the Klingon weapon thing. You know? Oh, look at that. That's a chubby cockroach. Oh, look, he has a little shield that says no bug spray on it. Okay, we're not using bug spray. We're using uh, a giant fuck-off, like, like, scythe or scimitar or whatever that thing's called. What's that thing called in Star Trek? There, that has a name for it. Yeah. The Batlith. That's it. The Batlith. He had a Batlith. We Batlith him to death. Dark Magician. Dark Magic Attack. How many people are into Star Trek? You know, I'm not way into it. Um, I watched a couple episodes when I was a kid. My uncle, John, is way into Star Trek. He's like, he's like an old school nerd. You know, he likes anime too. In fact, I'm going to Anime Expo in July with my uncle. Um, because he's been to LA before, but he's gonna go to the convention as well with me. He likes anime enough. When we, when he was staying over, uh, last time, uh, when my grandfather passed away and he came in, he stayed at my place. And we were watching a little bit of JoJo's uh, Stone Ocean. I showed him Dr. Stone. I showed him... Uh, we watched a little bit of Promise Neverland together. Uh, so he likes anime. And um, I think we won. I don't think I have to use anything. Oh, I should have tried Metal Morph and Red Eyes. Um, but, you know, he's into, like, Star Trek kind of stuff, you know? I like the next generation, yeah. Like, we were visiting my aunt in the nursing home. And there was a sign in the nursing home that said, like, the neutral zone, because it was, like, the neutral zone. And my uncle started making, like, he took a picture of it and made, like, a bunch of Star Trek references on Twitter. or uh, Not Twitter, Facebook. And I didn't understand any of them, but yeah. Isn't there a new Star Trek coming out soon? Or something. I don't, I don't remember. I don't really pay attention. All right, Villager 1, you put up a valiant effort. All right, let's go outside. Let's go outside. Uh, I don't think I, did, I didn't show him any one piece, but uh, maybe he would uh, Let's see. So where am I going next? Uh, we need to get a map to find the hidden temple. So let's head to the Pharaoh's palace Maybe there might be something there that we might be able to find There's nobody here. Oh my god. No one has watered those palm trees in like 10 years. Come on cruel oppressive dictatorships or no there is no excuse for not properly watering your garden, damn it. Haitian deserves to die just for that. Everything's been destroyed. No, it isn't. There is still a lot of stuff here. Whoa. Who are you? No one's allowed here. Get out! Um, what's up with the, uh, the glasses, dude? You look like you're, you know, being in, like, a 1980s music video or some shit. Alright, so this is the mage soldier. And we have to beat him in order to uh, uh, get a map to the Hidden Temple. The Legends of the Hidden Temple. Remember Legends of the Hidden Temple? I love that show. That was my favorite Nickelodeon game show on Nick Gas. Remember Nick Gas? Oh, awesome. I think we're going to lead this off with a labyrinth wall. Get through this, Hoss. Oh, yeah, Picard. Yeah, there's a new Picard series, yeah. Patrick Stewart is an amazing actor. Oh my god, why would you attack it? Labyrinth wall or not, why would you attack with an 800 attack monster, you idiot? God, you know what? I'm not even gonna waste a bright castle on you. You're not even worth it. I am just throwing out this Millennium Golem. Olmec was great, yeah. Millennium Golem. Dude, you don't even deserve my best. You didn't duel Villager 2! He's the same as the Villager 2 we beat before, don't worry. Brachioratus. 
I wanted to have a little bit of every type, uh, because you'll see in the future, um, we're gonna be dueling on a lot of different fields coming up, and so I wanted to have at least one monster that benefited from each field. So, like, the Brachioratus and the Millennium Golem, uh, that's a rock and a dinosaur, respectfully. So, the Wasteland field, when we duel on that, that'll actually power them up. Uh, nope. I'm just gonna use my weakest monsters here. Oh, I get the power bonus. Weather Report! Re Weather Report actually has an hilarious effect in the anime. You know what, actually? Labyrinth Wall, direct attack! Weather Report has a great effect in the actual card game. Um, did I say the anime? In the card game, it has a great one. It is the hard counter to Swords Revealing Light. I think what it does is if your opponent has swords on the field, you play Weather Report, like you flip it up, and Swords of Revealing Light is instantly negated, and on top of that, I think you get to declare your battle phase twice that turn uh, to, like, really uh, wipe out your opponent like that just played, like, swords. So it's sort of like um, White Hole and Call of the Grave. Not Call of the Grave. Yeah, Call of the Grave and um, anti Raigeki that I have framed over here. Uh, cards that are, like, hard counters to one card and one card only. Yeah. Uh, very broken. Very broken. You know your cards. Well, boy... I guess I- I guess I'm just gonna quit now. Search, yes. Oh. He ran crying home to his mommy. Barry discovers an ancient papyrus. Ooh, extra points for them saying papyrus and not paper. So the Egyptians discovered papyrus. Uh, basically it was the papyrus plant that grew all up and down the Nile River. I mean, this shit was fucking everywhere, okay? They would take the papyrus. Uh, pound it down, like, you know, compress it over and over again with stones, and it would make very durable paper. Uh, they would also have to treat it with a chemical. Uh, but this was all trial and error. They figured it out. And so for that reason, um, the Egyptians basically invented paper. So, yeah. It's so crazy. It's such a, such a fundamental thing that we all have and we take for granted. It's just paper. You know, when you want to write something down, you have paper. But, you know, back then, very hot commodity. Not every location, not every culture had it. Um, so now that we have the map, uh, let's head back to the Valley of Kings, and, uh, let's see if Sadim can be useful. Maybe Sadim's only job here is just to light those torches back there. That has to be a pain in the ass. He has to climb up on the crotches of each and every one of those statues every day, and then make sure the fire is stoked. There's a lot of flyer fire back there. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's like it's like twelve fires. They they stretch into the darkness. Can I be of service? Oh my. Yeah, here's the map, bro. Lead me to the forbidden ruins. Hmm, let me see. Ah, yes, right. I know where this is. Please follow me, Prince. You know, I'm actually the Pharaoh now. Like, let's not kid ourselves. My dad's dead, my mom's dead. I'm I'm the prince. I mean, I'm the Pharaoh now. You can call me Pharaoh, please. Oh my goodness! Ooh, epic music. Now this is calm music. I would say this is chill. Oh, we're getting some flute in there. Like an old wooden flute. Or maybe a, uh, a f oh, what's it called? A, um, ah, uh, the shit the satyrs always, like, blow on. You know, what's it called? That thing. A pan flute. It's like a pan flute. China did the first true paper. I mean, papyrus was pretty good for paper. And that was like... Ancient China was not until way after ancient Egypt. Ancient... Well, okay. Not way after. Ancient Egypt was like... Well, Narmer unified the land around 3150 BC. The Xia dynasty, which is like the first dynasty of, of China was around 2000 BC, so the Egyptians had a little bit of a lead. The ancient sorcerers, they hid the secrets of their magic within the royal tomb. The rumor that some of these secrets were passed down to their descendants. So this is that place. I love that giant eye up there. I think I'm gonna get a giant eye of Ujjad on my ceiling. Uh, okay, we have a map and a drawing. Well, geography is everything, ladies and gentlemen. What is geography? What is geography, ladies and gentlemen? So let's look at that map. Ah, yes. A standard map of ancient Egypt. Uh, I see Cairo and, uh, well, no, Cairo didn't exist in ancient. Okay, Thebes 
and Memphis, uh, the Feyrun Peninsula. Oh yeah, it's all there. It's all there. You you don't know what it looks like because you don't know ancient Egyptian history, but it's all there. Uh, Abydos is there. Yeah, I, I see it all. I see it all. Yeah. <laughs> There's some kind of mark on this map. Oh shit, Seto! And now it reveals the spots in which the temple's high shin has hidden the millenniums. Okay, so I guess these were the ancient maps where all the millennium items were hidden away for like hundreds or thousands of years before this game even takes place. And now Hai Shin found out about them and he sent those priests at the beginning of the game to each of these temples to guard the Millennium Items. So now we have to head to each of these temples, defeat the High Mages, and take their Millennium Items. But Seto, what are you doing here, man? You! Imagine carving that map. They, they, were, they were pretty good at it. Have you seen some hieroglyphics in tombs? I mean, they're pretty intricate. They, they managed to do it, all right. I followed you here. I've been searching for the Forbidden Ruins myself. I also believe that Hei Shin has found this place as well. Oh, no, no, no shit. Does his ungodly ancient power that slaughtered the entire king and queen, the king and the queen and all the land, that tip you off there? He may be a mage, but he comes from a line of sorcerers. Potato, potato. And why would Hei Shin's lackey tell us about all this? Hey, yeah, good point, Sadim. Me and Sadim are gonna mess you up, Seto. Sadim's got this. I'm like, I'm like pushing Sadim. Yeah, Sadim, you're in Sadim's house now. He owns this tomb. He's gonna kick your ass. You know, Sadim's like, uh, okay, my Pharaoh. I, I'm not really sure. Oh, Sadim, he, he has like a, a, a Kokesh sword. He'll, he'll slice, he'll slice you down. I'm not a Kokesh. What was it called? Um. Oh, there was that sword that they used. It was like the scythe blade. A kopesh? I can't remember what it was called. Something like that. We don't have to listen to you. I'm not talking to you, Tomb Keeper. I speak to your prince. Farewell. Hold it! I smell a rat, Seto. Kopesh. Yeah, it was a kopesh, all right. He's Haitian's right-hand man. Why in the world would he want to help you? No, you know what, Sadim? I think you're wrong about this. I think I, uh, I think we could trust him. I think he's he's helping us out. All right, let's take a look at that drawing now. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember this. This is from the beginning of the game. It looks like the drawing of some sort of spell. Oh, okay, cool. So can I, uh, can I cast the spell now? I wonder if they actually used real hieroglyphics for this. Because hieroglyphics are, like, known. I do like the uh, the artwork in the background. Like, the, the 3D, like, rendering. It looks really neat. I mean, for PlayStation 1 graphics, it's pretty good. All right, well, that's everything we needed here. Let us return. I sense there may be more secrets hidden within that chamber. Well, for right now, we have a job to do. And that job is to take out some high mages. These high, these mages are all blitzed as fuck, and it's time, it's time for us to, you know, confiscate their drugs, alright? And then when we get all the drugs, then we can go back to the Vast Shrine and take on, uh, Hai Shin. Let's check that out now. This is the Dark Shrine. This is where Hai Shin has set up his, uh, his offices. The offices of Hai Shin. Boy, this is a sacred temple of Lord Hai Shin. Eh, don't worry, I'll duel you and get in. It is not for the likes of you. Be gone. Oh, I didn't even get a chance to duel him to get in. Do you not know the rules, sir? I duel you. I win. You move aside and let me in. That's how it works. Anyway, so, um, yeah, we're going to begin our quest to defeat the shrines. Now, we have to defeat two people at each shrine. We have to defeat a low mage and then a high mage. Low mages are not that big of a deal, but some of the high mages have the strongest cards in this game. And, like, we're talking Gate Guardian, uh, the Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, and it's it's really tough. Um, in the Mod 15 version, might be even stronger with some powerful spells and traps. Who knows? Um, now, there is a there is a order we're supposed to take this. I believe we're supposed to go the Sea Shrine, and then there's nothing at the Shrine of Glory, and then the Mountain Shrine, and then uh, the Desert Shrine, Forest Shrine, and then I think we're supposed to do the Meadow Shrine last. Um... But, I think for now, I'm going to, um, hmm. How do I want to do this? Can I do a pull? I can do a pull. 
Let's do a poll. All right. I don't know how many options I can put, but which temple? All right, so this is going to be a little bit of a choose-your-own-adventure kind of game. Uh, let's see. So how many options can I add? I can only have four options. So... Ah, oh, man, that sucks. We can only do four options. All right. I'll leave the meadow and the forest off because those are, like, the hardest ones. So, for now, let's just do... Um... Oh, actually, there's only five. All right, then I'll, I'll just leave the meadow one off because, uh... Yeah. Okay. So, there's the pole... Uh, we'll just hang out here for a second and see which one we're going to do first. Is this a card drop mod? Yes, this is mod 15. Uh, there's some other mods, like there's mod 13 that only drops 13 cards, so there's some other versions. There's also a um, Forbidden Memories 2 that exists as well. I uh, have not played that one, but it also uh, exists. And that is a mod as well, because unfortunately they never made a uh, second version of this game. A sequel. They, I would love for them to have made a sequel to this. Like, the same kind of mechanics, like, with, um... Uh, the Guardian Stars and the fusioning mechanic. They could have really added on that, I think. It would have made an interesting... It would have made an interesting thing. Uh, I want to go through all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! games. Maybe not all of them, because there's some pretty crappy Game Boy games, like Dark Duel Stories... Okay, I think we're back. All right. Well, that that was a standard. I mean, that happened a lot last night, so I'm not going to be, yeah. All right, so the poll looks like the Sea Shrine is first, which I think um, it's the first one. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see who sells seashells down by the seashore. Let's go. Sea Shrine. First shrine. Oh, World Championship's good, too. I also have the one for the Xbox. Oh, my God. Falsebound Kingdom is a chore to get through. Lack of proper save function is a pain. Ooh, that sucks. I have never played Falsebound Kingdom, no. Uh, all right. You! Who are? <laughs> you! Who are? I think you're mixing up your words there, buddy. Um, I love the artwork of each of the temples. Like, honestly, I think, um, you know what? If I ever do my D&D campaign, I think I'm gonna put these temples in there. They look very nice. So this is the Sea Shrine. Wait! You! Your Prince Barry! How did you get here? Once again, it is Pharaoh Barry. A lot of people seem to be mixing this up today. Pharaoh Barry. All right, so this is the Low Meadow Mage. So, because... Uh, oh, I wanted to show you something, and I'll, I'll show it when we get to the High Mage. But, um, because these guys are all dueling in front of their temples, we all have their individual field spells. So, actually, what I'm going to do... This might sound weird, but I'm going to activate Sogan. Now, you might think that's leaving me open to attack, and it is. But a lot of times what they will do is that they will play their own field spell to go back or not. So I kind of messed that up, but it's okay. Oh, shit! But Twin at Thunder Dragon would have 3,300 attack if I didn't get rid of it. So I'll, I'll count my blessings. But holy crap! Even with all my bullshit cheating, we still don't have enough to take it down. All right, it has Pluto, so we still have the cheat sheet next to us here. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we need Uranus. And it turns out Javelin Beetle actually has Uranus. So, I think we can actually beat it. Go, Javelin Beetle. The greatest insect. Yeah! That's how you play the game right there. But no, if Yumi was still on the field, we would have not have been able to kill that. See, there you go. Now, he's going to waste his turn. And here we go. Now, because it's Umi, Flame Cerberus is powered down. Uh, let's throw out my Dark Magician. But I do have a few uh, fish and sea serpent monsters in my deck, so they will be powered up by this as well if we can draw them. We'll probably defeat the Low Mage, no problem. High Mage of the Sea Shrine, it's not that bad. Um, and I think uh, we'll be able to beat him, no problem as well. Ooh, Serpent Night Dragon is another really cool card. 
That's uh, one of Rex's cards from the anime. Oh, shit! See? Boulder Tortoise. And I don't think we can break that. Oh, my God. You live another day. He's going to bust out a tornado wall on us. I love the water deck synergy in early Yu-Gi-Oh. I love, like, Tornado Wall, Legendary Ocean. I just love that kind of stuff. Uh, ooh, we got an equip spell. Let's equip it to Dark Magician. 3,000 attack. Dark Magic attack. Oh, good. No trap. Is it Tulmane... Is it, uh, Tulmanaic Egypt? Uh, no. I think this takes place in the New Kingdom. So I have a theory. I have a theory. So... It's never explained. It, okay, in the original Japanese version of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's 3,000 years ago, is what they say, from present day. So 3,000 years from the year 2000. Okay, so that'd be 1,000 BC, which was, like, after the New Kingdom, but, like, you were, like, around, uh, around 3,000 years ago. So, like, I think the New Kingdom ended around, like, 1200 BC or something like that so it would have been in the late period but whatever close enough I like to think it's the new kingdom so anyway my theory is this um Yami Yugi's real name is Atem so he was Pharaoh Atem now there was no Pharaoh named Atem but King Tut's original name was Tutan uh, Cotton and he changed it to Tutan Common so I think Aten, the original name of King Tut, A-T-E-N, I think Takahashi just added, changed the N to an M, so Aten because Atem, or Aten, and then boom, I think that was the basis. Now, in the English, they say 5,000 years ago, which would have been 3,000 BC, which would have been pre-dynastic Egypt. Still feasible, but I think they, I, the, the architecture and everything we see... Like, the pyramids exist in the Millennium World when they go back in time and they see the pyramids. The pyramids were probably already, like, a thousand years old by the time, like, by the time King Tut existed or by the time Atem existed in the anime. So, you know, 5,000 years ago, Egypt would have still existed. Narmer had just unified the lands, um, but it would have been pre-dynastic. It would have been, like, very much uh, no pyramids, nothing like that. Anyway... That was your Egyptian um, history lesson for now. All right, so now we have the inner chamber. We have Sekmaton, Sekmaton, who looks like he has flowing silk for his um, epic robe. We shall never allow them to fall into your hands. Prepare to face my sea deck. Prepare to meet your doom. I'm Mako Tsunami's great, 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 great grandfather. You shall pay dearly for your folly. All right, bonus points for with Folly. All right, there's something I want to show you guys. Now, when I was looking through these cards earlier when I was building my deck, I saw something that made my jaw drop, okay? This mod has actually included some new cards that were not in the original Forbidden Memories. So yeah, the god cards are in this. Slifer, the sky dragon. A weakened dragon that can no longer fly, but is still a formidable force to be reckoned with. That doesn't seem to be accurate, but okay. The winged dragon of Ra. A bird-like dragon with four bladed wings. Uh, I only see two wings, but okay. And Obelisk, the tormentor. A fearsome monster sent from the netherworld to destroy dragons. Okay, I mean, Obelisk does destroy the blue eyes, so I guess that's accurate. So what they did was basically just take other cards and their data and change them into this. So this, the god cards are just like palette swaps of like other cards. Um, and even their 3D models. Like, Obelisk does not have a 3D model. This is actually the description of, uh, Dragon Seeker. So if I were to summon Obelisk and use a 3D battle, it would actually be Dragon Seeker. That would be the 3D model. Um, now, it's funny, because Obelisk has 4,000, which Obelisk always had set attack in the anime. Slifer has 5,000. Now, Slifer's attack is based on how many cards you have in your hand. 
which is interesting because in this game, the way it works, you always have to have five cards in your hand. You always drive far, you draw so you have five every turn. No more, no less. So it actually makes sense that Sliper would have 5,000. Roz is a little bit more complicated because his attack points are determined by tributes and there's no tributes in this game. So they just gave him 5,000 too. Uh, but yeah. I'm not going to be using the god cards now, but maybe for the final duel, we'll use the gods. We'll break out the god cards. We shall see. We shall see. All right. Wow, that's, um... Hmm. Well, we can play Summon Skull and see where it goes. If it doesn't go anywhere, we can always use swords. What do we got? Oh, he's going to have something powerful. Oh, okay, good. All right, you know what? Oh, wow, we have a lot of magic cards. I'm going to use um, swords anyway to see what he has. All right, what does he got? What does he got? Oh, Crab Turtle. Yeah, we can't bust up that Crab Turtle. That turtle is like a crab, but it's it, that turtle's def it's, it's more turtle than crab right now, definitely. All right, what do we got? Oh, Aqua Dragon, and oh, check this shit out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 42, 50. 62, 67. Four. Actually, that one was a gift. Ah, oh, 100 off. Man, if it was a 29,000-year-old white turtle, we would have been we would have been able to beat it. Oh boy. Oh, and he put it in defense, but oh right, because he can't attack. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Well, I'm not gonna waste. Well, hold on. Uh, you know what? Actually, I am, because then Summon Skull will be able to destroy it. Ha 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 ha! You suck. How's it feel to get spell binding circled? Oh, you got the power bonus? Who cares? I got Aqua Dragon. He's like a dragon, but he's like Aqua. It, it's it's a, just a dragon that really likes to drink water. Uh, and also, machine monsters are powered down on this field. Oh, I got rid of all the mechanical chasers, and I replaced them with a labyrinth tank and a mechanical... Not a, a launcher spider, yeah. Um, okay. So... Oh! Oh, shit. Oh, why did I do that? No, I'm sorry. I I had a brain fart there. No. Meteor Dragon and Red Eyes meet Meteor B, not Meteor and Summon Skull. I had a brain fart there. Sorry! Sorry, everybody. Sorry. That Hydration Dragon is very respectful. So, I'm planning this One Piece... Not One Piece. I'm planning a D&D &D thing, right? And so, today, I was flipping through Fizzbonds. Um, this is going to be a D&D &D story discussion. So, if you don't play D&D, &D, I'm just letting you know. If you're not a D&D &D nerd, I'm sorry. But um, I was going through Fizzbond's um, Directory of Dragons or whatever, like Treasury of Dragons, which is a really good book. You should pick it up if you haven't. Um, and maybe Kazechin might be able to destroy this. Oh, yeah. All right. Kentakano Megami. Anyway, um, in my world that I'm making, because I have like this uh, homebrew world I'm making, I kind of want to have this thing where there's a... Uh, you know, not like a dragon parliament or a dragon... There's there's kind of this nation of dragons, okay? And I'm going to sort of have this thing where every dragon type, there is an ancient dragon that's sort of like the head of their clan, okay? And I want to give a very spe specific name to each one of those dragons. So I was going through um, different languages, and I think I'm going to go with Greek. So, for the metallic dragons, so the copper, brass, bronze, silver, and gold dragons, I'm going to name them after their Greek names for copper, brass, bronze, and stuff. It actually ended up sounding really cool. And so now I'm thinking what language to use for the, uh, the chromatic dragons. So, like, red, blue, green, black, and white. Um, what are some languages that have, like, a really cool word for, like, red and black? Like, because that, that's, the, like, going to be the names of the dragons that are, like, the head of the clans. So, yeah. That's what I'm working on right now. My brother's name's Sabat. Can you say happy birthday? Happy birthday, Sabat. Spanish would be good. Yeah. Thunder Dragon. Icelandic. I was looking at Icelandic, but it didn't really vibe with what I wanted. Ooh, Welsh. I didn't think of that. Welsh would be good. You are too powerful. My silken robe was no match. But you don't stand a chance against the power of Master Heishin. Well, get him. Come, tell him to come down here and I'll kick his ass right here in the Seed Temple. Throw him out to sea. 
Let the waves wash him away. Kill two birds with one stone. All right, so that was the sea shrine. Let's check out that pool. The pool. Uh, what was number two? The desert shrine is next. Okay, so let's uh, let's check out the desert shrine. And after you defeat any two temples, um, there's actually a side quest thing you can do, and it only happens after you beat two temples. If you beat all the temples, you won't be able to do the side quest. You're an inspiration. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Ken. Happy birthday to everybody. Romanian would be good. Oh, look at this guy. You have kept me waiting long enough. I am DesertMage.exe. You will defeat... This desert shrine shall be your final resting place. It is time to face my insert deck name, abort, retry, fail. They kind of do look like robots. Okay, so this is the wasteland field. I actually like the wasteland field because it kind of looks like a barbecue grill. Like, you can kind of see taking a big chunk of, like, like uh, pork ribs or something and just laying it on there and just like... Tsss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how you cook that meat right there. Yeah. All right, so uh, we actually drew Brachioratus as our first monster who actually gets the field power up. So, uh, 2700 Brachioratus. Let's go into it. Yeah. Uh, zombies will also get a power up here, too, but I don't think I have any zombies in my deck. Ooh, I should throw a zombie in my deck when we face against the High Mage. That'll work. All right. Mikazuki no Yaiba! Now you're making me hungry. I just ate, so... Oh, is it a widespread ruin? Ah, uh, fake trap. Nobody cares. All right. Brachioratus Raid. Making me hungry. I could go for some pork ribs, though. I just ate, but I could go for some pork. Oh, my God. Oh, shit! See, Mystical Sand is also a rock type, so she's powered up here as well. Uh... Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. Well. I think I could beat her with Brachioratus. Uranos beats Pluto. Wait, she has Mercury, so we're fine. Yeah. Uh. Eh. Eh, just the low mage. I don't think he has anything that's really threatening. I do it for my sister, Serenity. Ooh, Swahili would be good. I like, I, in my world that I'm making, I like to have references to pretty much every culture. So I, I made the geography for it. I actually got the map uh, printed out and laminated, so it's all ready to go. Um, but their individual, like, continents are going to be represented by different, like, cultures. So there's a culture that represents, I mean, there's a landmass that represents the Americas, South America, India. I have a China. I have a Japan. I have an Australia. I have a land of, uh, Philippines and, um, uh, the, uh, Caribbean area. Uh, there's an area that's England and Scotland. There's an area for all the Nordic countries. Greenland is represented. Um... Let's see. Uh, oh, Oceania. There's a little area. There's a little archipelago that's going to be like Nauru and all the air, like the Marshall Islands and those areas too. So I'm trying to include like every part. There's a country that's reminiscent of Russia. So there's going to be a reference to like everything I'm trying here. Oh, Labyrinth Wall gets powered up. Oh, I forgot to equip it to Labyrinth. Oh, oh I should have equipped it with a uh, magical labyrinth to get up to 4,000. Oh, let's see. Let's see him attack into it. Africa is represented too. I have, a, I have an allegory for Egypt. Um, and also, uh, Southern Africa, and, uh, well, there is, like, a desert. There's, like, a Sahara Desert there as well. Uh, awesome. I'm not gonna... Eh. Hold on, I'm trying... Oh, wait. This'll make, uh, THTD. Twin-headed Thunder Dragon! All right, here we go. All right. Uh, ooh. All right. Please be a fake trap. All right, we're good. I have a North Pole. There's a North Pole and a South Pole. Which, for the North Pole or the South Pole, I'm probably just going to do a George R.R. R. Martin thing and just do, like, you know, not White Walkers, but it's like, there's an evil Ice King that lives in the South Pole. It's probably going to be some shit like that. Oh, actually, let's... Hmm. Should I bust out... Yeah, let's bust out Metal Zoa. Why not? He's got some... He's got some juice. That was a weird way to describe that, but... Juice! Oh, Pump King, the King of Ghosts. Sorry. Not good enough. Which one is the coldest? Well, in our world, Antarctica is the coldest. In my world, 
Yeah, no, Antarctica would still be the coolest, because Antarctica is the landmass, and the North Pole doesn't really have a landmass. It's just drifting, drifting sea ice. Oh, I can tell you a story about a hot, uh, one of the first uh, expeditions to the North Pole that ended in horrible disaster. No, I cannot lose. Sorry, abort, retry, fail. Not like this. Not like this. Proceed. I like the sphinxes there. Oh, that's nice architecture. What the fuck is up with your neck, bro? What the? This is a kid's game, you know, right? This was rated G, was it? Actually, not G, E. Yeah, this was rated E for everyone. These, this man's outfit is not E for everyone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Look, they're penises. Like, you can't not see penises. Like, they're, they're, they even have the veins. The veins are there, for God's sake. <laughs> Well, I mean, a lot of religious symbolism is usually phallic, so I guess, um, yeah. I am High Mage Martis, Lord of the Desert. I mean desert. I am forsworn to protect the Millennium Item. It is my destiny to eliminate you and the robots will take over ancient Egypt. Let the desert be your grave. Defend yourself. Initiating duel mode. That reminds me of the uh, the duel that um, Kaiba had against the dueling robot. The dueling robot. That duel robot. It was pretty epic. I like that duel. No, they're just mushrooms. Quick, get your mind out of the gutter, sir. All right, what do we got here? What do we got on standby? Uh, by the way, haven't said it yet, but the high mage music. Epic. Okay. So we got, uh, we can make a THTD. Let's do that. Actually, I can make it with an Aqua Dragon. Save that Serpent Knight for later. All right, we got a THTD. That seems like a good place to start out. Let's go. Mama, mama, mama. He just has the drip teching. He just has that drip. All right, let me see what that is. It's probably a Labyrinth Wall. No, it's a Kaze Jin. Why would you have a Kaze Jin? That doesn't even synergize with your deck, bro. I inserted Kaze Jin for a plan that is so convoluted you would never, your feeble human mind would never understand it. Yeah, whatever. All right, let's throw out, uh, let's throw out Crab Turtle. Crab Turtle's pretty powerful. Oh, shit, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, damn it. All right, he's got the Stone D. Now... Even though Stone Dragon is a dragon, it's a, still a rock monster, so it actually gets the bonus here. Not on Mountain Field. Uh, we got two Metal Morphs. Do we fuse the Metal Morphs? You can fuse magic cards. You can do it. Fuse two Metal Morphs to make Mega oh, Mega Morph. Mega, Mega Metal Morph. Fuse it with uh, the Dark Magician to make Metal Dark Magician. I'm surprised that's actually not a thing. They ran that Red Eyes archetype all over the place. You know, I'm surprised they don't have... They have Red Eyes uh, Black Dragon, Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, Red Eyes Black Darkness Metal Zombie Dragon. Like, there's all these... I think all of those are real cards, by the way. Um, yeah. But anyway, Dark Magician, he's good enough. All right. The Great Mammoth of Gold Fine. Okay, that's actually a story. So, Great Mammoth of Goldfine is actually named after a person that worked at Konami or worked at in the American offices. His last name was Goldfine. So, you'll find that throughout some of the Yu-Gi-Oh cards that they have, like, weird names in there. Like, Slifer is the same deal. Like, I think there was just a dude named Slifer because the original name of Slifer is Osiris, which makes sense because it's the winged dragon of Ra, Ra being or Amun-Ra being the sun god of Egypt or one of them. And then Obelisk is not a god, but is like a, a, a like the phallic symbol, the, the the temple kind of space. It's like a pedestal, like the pillar is an obelisk. And then um, Slifer is just a made-up name, so it made sense it would be Osiris in the original. All right. Enough about Egyptian history. We got a mage to slay. Uh, but I don't think I can do that yet, so I'm gonna have to. Oh, it's even, even Steven. Remember that show, Even Steven? I didn't watch a lot of it. Was, um... Was Shia LaBeouf in Even Steven? 
Yeah, yeah, that was Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I liked Holes. That was a good movie. Ah, uh, damn you. All right. Ha-ha! 50 attack points more! Your Mega Zowler falls. Okay, I need to come up with a move here. All right, uh, Saturn. We need Saturn. No. No, and yes! Sui Jin with the Whizzle! Bring it downtown! I always loved Sui Jin. Sui Jin was always my favorite one of the, uh... Of the Gate Guardian pieces. Holes is a great movie. I loved it as a book, too. Book. I read the book a lot when I was in middle school. I read it probably at least three times. Oh my god, 50 life points. The actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Is Shia LaBeouf a cannibal? Really, Shia? Is that what he's up to these days? Come on, Shia. Have some decorum, man. Kim Possible's voice actress was also an Even Stevens. I actually did not know that. I, the only thing I remember about Even Stevens was the movie. They did the movie where they were trapped on the island. I remember that, because that was on a lot. Dude, remember those uh, Disney Channel original movies, like um, the Million Dollar Cook-Off ones? I remember that. That movie was on a lot. Uh, there was the one where they made the holographic uh, pop star. That was a good one. Um, the Desert Claims Me This Day. <laughs> Abort, abort, self-destruct sequence. We have to run out of the temple. No! <laughs> Barry gets the Millennium Scales. Do, 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 do. All right. So, uh, the Desert Shrine is defeated. All right. So, right now, we're actually going to head back to the card shop to... Oh, shit. I actually don't know if I can save before the, um... It, it might just be the, um... No, okay, I do get to save. Thank you, bald man. All right, I'm going to save. Good. Good. Luck of the Irish was good. I remember Luck of the Irish. Uh, now you can do the Egyptian taxes. Absolutely. All right, so let us leave. Uh, or no, let's... Wait, can I go to the... Oh, I can't go to the... Oh, I have to go back to it to go to the dueling grounds. That's weird, but all right. Side quest time! Oh, yeah! Uh, yeah, filling grabs. Okay, side quest time. Barry, we got some trouble. Seto and the mages came here while I was gone, and they took off with Tayana. Well, what did you do to stop him, Jono? Wait, wait, where's Villager 1? Is Villager 1 safe? Did they take Villager 1 away? We have to save Villager 1. Let's go! Villager 1's like, nah, I'm right here, just playing the game. Oh, thank God. Holy shit. Woo! I was worried for a second there. All right, let's go get Tayana. Let's go save Taya. So we're actually heading to the Vash Shrine right now. Uh, we're actually allowed in to rescue Tayana. Yeah, I guess he's out getting a sandwich or something, so we're allowed in. Oh, look, it's Anubis. Oh, hey, it's um, Avatar Paradox. How you doing, man? It gives me great pleasure to welcome you fools to your own funeral. Scram, we got bigger fish to fry. Uh, Joey, this guy looks like he's like seven feet tall and could probably, you know, beat your ass into the sidewall. So you should probably be kind of respectful here. Okay, so we're, I guess we're just getting into the duel here. All right. So we're dueling a uh, generic labyrinth mage guy. Well, let's see which is powerful, your labyrinth wall or my labyrinth wall. So this guy might have, like, wall shadow and shit. Um, yeah, let's just lead with the summon skull strat. That seems like a good idea. He's probably going to start off with a labyrinth wall in defense mode. Maybe labyrinth tank, but summon skull is still stronger. What's he got? Oh, I underestimated, I overestimated him. Wait, no, underestimated. I underestimated him, yes. Uh, but we can still take care of this. Uh, Pluto is beaten by Uranos, but I don't need Uranos because I have Skull Redbird with... Actually, I'm not even going to waste the Bright Castle yet. I have Skull Redbird with 3,300 attack. So, yeah. Pluto is strong against Neptune. We're good. Bring it on. Gate Guardian! Yeah, um, I don't know if he actually has Gate Guardian. It wouldn't surprise me if he does. He might have the parts. 
but I don't think he actually has. Oh my god, we're gonna power up, we're gonna power up uh, Sunbird even more. This might, you know, bite me in the ass because he used a dragon, so that might be another dra This might be another, yeah, it's another THDD. Doesn't matter, though. We win. How's your day going? My day's been going pretty good. I, uh, made that Hunter Hunter video today, because Hunter Hunter's coming back! We're for four chapters! You know how, you know what, I love this, but it also is kind of sad that everybody was like, you know, we did it! Four chapters! It's been three and a half years and we get four chapters! And then it'll probably go on hiatus again for a few years, but we did it! We won! And it's like, I'm happy and I understand and I'm with you, but it's like, God, that's so sad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it is sad. Oh, I'm sad too, man. I, I I want the series to finish. And I know Tagashi wants to finish it too. But, yeah. Summon Brachioratus. Oh, I got the power up. Oh! Oh, see, he does have the pieces. I dropped Hunter Hunter. Well, pick it back up. Right now. Oh, boy. All right. So, I don't think he'll summon Gate Guardian, but he'll probably have, you know, Sui Jin Kazujin. He might have the Ritual for it. Who knows? All right. I'm going to summon Super War Lion because he's a beast. Actually, wait a second. Hold on. Let's let's do this tactically here. Okay, that's Pluto. So, we need a Ranos. Uh, none of us guys have a Ranos. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Why not? I could also power it down with Spellbinding Circle, but it sucks you can't use more than one spell in a turn, you know? He has Gate Guardian. All right, well, yeah, I'm wrong, I guess. Um, so what else would I do today? Uh, I did the Hunter Hunter video. I put together a desk. That's something I did. I ordered a desk online. I got that. Because um, I have a guest bedroom. I, I actually don't have a lot of guests for, like, company. So, like, uh, my one friend spent the night here once. Uh, my uncle came down to visit every now and then. But he always had to, like, use my kitchen table as a desk because I have a desk in my room, but, like, my stuff's on there. And I have my desk down here, but it's filled with all my YouTube shit. So uh, I felt like, you know, I, there, should be a, there should be a desk in the guest bedroom. So I, I got a pretty simple desk. It looks pretty nice. Pretty nice desk, if I do say so myself. So, uh, yeah. And then I went out to eat, and now I'm doing this. Uh, we also got ice cream, but I didn't get anything. Um, let's just uh, use Zoa. Yeah. My one friend, actually two people, uh, my friend Chris spent the night here because he was actually uh, getting married, and I guess it's tradition for the husband to not sleep with his, like, bride-to-be the night before the wedding. I guess that's, like, a bad omen or something, so he spent the night here the day before the wedding, and I was the best man in the wedding the following day. And then Rustage came and visited in December, and he spent the night here as well. So, there we go. Aw, oh, he looks mad. You cannot hope to survive this labyrinth. He's like, yeah, well, wh whatever, buddy. You, okay, you beat me in the card game? Well, screw you. You're going to get lost in here forever, and you're going to be coming back to me, and you're going to be begging me to show you the way out. And I'm not going to because you were mean, you know? <laughs> All right, so yeah, it is sort of a labyrinth, but not really. It's just like, you know, right, left, that's it. All right, so now we're going to go right again. I think it's right, right, left, right. Unless they changed it in Mod 15. I hope they didn't. I do like Anubis chilling back there, though. He's pretty cool. Now we go right again, and I think this is it. Ah, we did it! Oh, high five! I really like the artwork here. So, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know if I'm... I, they, what they probably did is just take an eight... Oh, we got a... We got a bot in the chat, so I'm going to ban them. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, every once in a while you get the you get the sex robot. Sex robot, sex robot, sex robot, sex robot. Do you wanna get down? Oh the hell you will! <laughs> That's a whitest kids you know reference right there. <laughs> I told you no! No, I say, bots! No! The desert mage came back. He's just like, well, I will bot your chat then. How about that? Um, but I don't know. They probably just took, like, an ancient Egyptian, like, like art book. And they just probably went through the pages and adapted it. Because it looks very similar. But I actually do like what they did here. 
because the artwork that would have existed back in ancient Egypt, it would have been a lot more colorful than it is now, because all the artwork we find in the tombs and everything, um, it's all faded. The paint is all worn out because it's thousands of years old, but back then, it would have been very colorful. It would have had a bunch of different colors, you know? So, it's actually neat that they included that in here. All right, here we go, though. Enough admiring the artwork. So you've come at last. We have Teana here. Um, yes. R.I.P. Trevor Moore. Absolutely. When I visit L.A. this summer, I actually want to visit his grave and uh, pay my respects. Because he was a funny dude. I should thank my lucky stars that the puzzle still exists for me to take. Seto, destroy the prince. So, Haishin's a little bit, like, lack lackadaisical, a little bit blasé about defeating us, because he's already won, you know, he's already taken over all of Egypt, so getting the Millennium Puzzle at this point is kind of just like a victory lap for him, he's just like, yeah, I guess I could take it, but, you know, I've kind of already won, so, eh. Anyway, um, this side quest is going to, uh, unlock Seto Second, so that's the only time in the game we can duel Seto Second. Um, at the end of the game, as part of the final boss gauntlet, we will be dueling Seto third. Um, but yeah, that's why we're doing this little uh, side quest here. My, my, I am surprised you passed the trials of the labyrinth. Are you kidding? You could have, we could have done it with both hands tied behind our back. Is that the best you could do? Ah, the hostage. You can have her back. I'm not really even sure why we took her to begin with. I've been waiting for this chance to face you once again. There is no joy in simply trading the hostage for your time. It would be great if we just took Teyana and just, like, cheesed it out of the temple. And Seto's like, now we should do- Hey, come back! Come on! You don't give up your leverage. I mean, come on, man. I mean, I'm an honorable duelist, so I will duel you. Aw, uh, dude, wouldn't it be funny if, like, you went up to somebody and they're like, I challenge you to a duel, and you're like, you're on, and you show up, okay, dawn the next day, and you show up at dawn with your deck and your duel disc, and they have, like, a fucking pistol, and you're like, oh, I misinterpreted this whole thing. You said duel. I thought you meant... <laughs> All right. So what do we got? Uh, Labyrinth Wall and Magical Labyrinth. Okay, so set a second. I don't think he's that difficult, but I also said that about Isis. We got our ass kicked like four times in a row. So we'll see how this goes. Play this by ear. Oh, boy. Is that sun? No, it's moon. Interesting. So the blue eyes white dragon is usually sun. So it's not the blue eyes. Oh. Gate Guardian usually has moon, I think. Seto second might have it. I don't know. I'm gonna get rid of these cards here. Uh, but Curry Box is the strongest. I'm gonna lay Bakuri Box in defense mode. I'm pretty sure he'll attack with something. Let's see what's going on here. A dual disc made from pistols. Oh, there's the blue eyes. I have a feeling that at some point in the Yu-Gi-Oh franchise, there is a character that has a dual disc gun. That is probably a thing. That was almost certainly, you know, censored in America. All right. Uh, I kind of want to save Red Eyes for Mercury beats Sun. Oh, Serpent Knight Dragon has Mercury. Perfect. I'm just going to use both Bright Castles for Serpent Knight then to get even more damage in, just to make damn sure we can trump the uh, Blue Eyes. Actually, let's do a 3D battle here. Serpent Knight versus Blue Eyes White. There are dual guns in 5D. Say there it is. I know it. Axel from GX. Did Axel? I remember Axel vaguely. Did Axel have a gun on his dual disc though? Yeah. Oh look, he's a little dragon snack. A very elegant dragon. And there's the blue eyes, looking epic as always. Not as thick as that other dragon, but still pretty commendable. Serpent Knight Dragon. Serpent attack. All right, just vaguely attack the blue eyes. There we go. Yes, his dual disc was a gun. All right, I guess they just censored that. Always pissed me off they never uh, finished GX in the anime. So it's like the only season of Yu-Gi-Oh that does not have an English version. Um, and then, like, all of 5Ds, all of Arc-V, Zexel, 
Sevens, that all has, you know, Vrains, that has an English dub. D Duel Monsters has an English dub. The only season of Yu-Gi-Oh! that was never dubbed. Last season of GX. And that was a good season, too. That was actually a really solid season. All right. I guess I can't attack with Labyrinth Wall to figure out what that is, but I'll find out next next uh, next turn. Oh, what? Oh, shit. You do have Gate Guardian, huh? Well, um... Oh, but we can make Meteor Black Dragon now. Okay. Uh... Yeah, see, Gate Guardian always has... Sun. Oh, I think Meteor Black Dragon has Sun, though. I'm gonna make a gamble. I'm pretty sure it does. Come on, Sun. 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 Yes! Oh. Oh, but what of his trap card? Oh, shit. It is a trap card, right? It's not a spell. Oh, the final arc of 5Ds wasn't dubbed either. What is with them not fit? What is with them blue balling us? You know, last arc of last season of GX, nope. Last season of 5D, nope. We gotta move on to Zexel. We can't sit around and dub this Yu-Gi-Oh. 5Ds was the best Yu-Gi-Oh anime. I have not seen it, but I've heard enough about it that I think um, a lot of people have that opinion, so I think that's warranted. Yeah, Jaden was GX, or Judai. Um, I have to just go for it, I think. And let's go for it with a Dawn, with a 3D battle. Oh, shit, no! Oh, thank God. I was worried that was a fucking widespread ruin. All right. If that powers up Gate Guardian... Oh, it's another trap card. Okay. Oh, good. That'll, that'll help out. That'll help out. And yet they made a dub of Capsule Monsters. Hey, four kids doesn't make any sense. Okay, just another fake trap. That's fine. He's got three fake traps in his hand. Which is funny, because fake trap in the game actually sucks. It's horrible. They, that, it's basically just negate attack here. Um, you know, stops the attack, ends the battle phase. Or not the battle phase. Is there a trap card that only stops one attack, but you can attack with other cards? Because negate attack just ends the battle phase. I'm trying to think. There probably is. I just, you know, there's probably a lot of them, actually. I'm just not thinking of any right now. Um, yeah, let's power up uh, Labyrinth Wall. Just to, you know, make sure. Strengthen our defenses. Strengthen our defenses. All right, here we go. 3D battle. Gate Guardian versus Meteor. Black Dragon. Magic Cylinder, yeah, but that doesn't... Well, it stops the attack, but it has an added effect. Scrap Iron Scarecrow. Uh, is that a trap card? I'm thinking of Swift, because Swift Scarecrow is a monster. Oh man, Meteor Black Dragon looks so damn cool. The emulator also spruces it up a little bit. Oh my god. Obliterate! Oh, that's cool. It's like tie-dye. Wow. Konami needs to push the next mechanics. Can't sell XZs while your cartoon is still focused on synchros. Yeah. Like, pretty much 99% of everything else in any form of media, movies, television, video games, card games, manga, comic books. It's all down to marketing at the end of the day, folks. It's all down to marketing, advertising, money. And that's just that's just the truth of the world. Raigeki? Yep. Oh, he didn't attack. Oh, he can't. Oh, he can't. Man, swords? Swords is worth its freaking weight in gold here. I tell you what. Um, all right. Okay, what is this? Moon. Is this another fucking Gate Guardian? I swear to God. Um, we need um, Sun. And we don't have Sun. We need to get rid of these cards then because we need to draw a... Um, let's save Zoa because if Zoa, if he can't attack next turn, we might be able to make Metal Zoa. Yeah, that's, you know, but Metal Zoa will be stronger than that, so. Oh boy. Okay, we got one more turn on swords, I think. Uh, I'm feeling that's a gate guardian. Oh, no, we got one more turn. Oh, oh, okay. Spellbinding circle, that can do something. Let's do that. I'm really afraid of that card. I really don't want to attack it. Okay, here we go. Oh, boy. 
Oh, ugh, that still worries me, though. He's not putting it in defense. Oh, these cards all suck. I hope I can play the new Yu-Gi-Oh card, but with the new rules, that would be fun. Go ahead. Um, all right, let's attack this card. Fake trap. Uh-huh. All right, let's try this. Okay, that was a Zoa, too. All right, cool. All right, what do we got? Oh, I'm worried about that card. That might be a Blue Eyes, too. But no, Blue Eyes always a Sun. Oh, a Sui Jin. All right. What is that card? Summon Skull. All right, I'm going to just have to... Uh, oh, okay, I can destroy Sui Jin with this. I'm just going to have to attack to figure out what the hell it is. All right, 3D battle. Nah, not 3D battle. Let's see. What is it? What is it? What is it? Metal Zo- Oh! I crashed! Okay. Alright, good. I guess just he couldn't kill his, uh, his, his, uh, pre-metal self. So that's why Metal Zoa never attacked. Oh, now we have Raigeki. Okay, but I think we might be good now. Uh, I don't know. Our cards aren't that great. We're only down to 12 cards in our deck, too. Alright, the free box. Alright, it looks like he's down to some weaker cards here. Down. There we go. Down, down, down to the bottom of the sea. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think I can win right now if I use Raigeki, so let's just do that. All right, Seto, you put up a fight. But see you at Seto third, buddy. Your final form. This isn't even his final form yet. You should do one match where Exodia is summoned before the playthrough. Well, you missed the first part because we did that at the end. Go back, watch the first part. At the very end, we used uh, Zig Exodia against Kaiba. Um, but yeah, what's your favorite uh, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, season? Um, let me know. I'm debating. I, I Probably the DM era, probably Duel Monsters would probably be an easy win. But I actually really like GX. There was so much filler. But I like the overall characters and, like, plot of GX, if you just cut out all the damn filler. Take the card and the girl. Actually, that'll be 15 cards. Thank you very much, sir. Tayana, are you okay? Yeah, I guess. Thanks, Barry. Oh, I guess you too, Jono. All right, let's get out of here. All right, let's stop at Denny's, get some hamburgers. Oh, there we go. Okay. Get some pancakes. I, I've actually never ordered uh, hamburgers at Denny's. I always get breakfast at Denny's. 5Ds, 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 Arc V. Uh, I don't see any 7s on here. Hey, come on now. Who doesn't love Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s? Come on, everybody. There's like one guy that's like, I like Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Get out. I am not playing this game again. I'm not continuing this Let's Play until you get out. You know? All right, so we did the side quest there. Um... You know, beat Seto second. That was cool. All right, back to the grind, though. Back to the grind. Now I think it's nothing until the final boss gauntlet, pretty much. All right, so we had Sea Desert. Uh, now the Forest Shrine is next. Now the Forest Shrine is actually pretty tough because the High Mage, uh, Anubis of the Forest Shrine, actually does have Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, which is 3,500 attack. Not easy, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Hans Mole Man voice. I like Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. Welcome to the Forest Shrine. Oh, it's alright. What? <laughs> I can't hear you, sir. You are a mummy. Five Ds had the best opening. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so this is the forest field. I don't think we've ever played on this one before. It's a very um, pixelated forest. Oh, dude, I just remembered this is such a lame thing to do. But when I was a kid, I actually would get these big pieces of poster board, and I would make dueling uh, play mats for me and my friend Ian when we would play, and I would draw them like this. So I would use like a like three green markers to paint the whole. Uh, field green so like now we're playing on the forest field now we're playing on the water field you know I, I would do that 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 just brought back a memory that was nice oh those were the days I was lucky I had at least one friend in my area in my neighborhood that actually played Yu-Gi-Oh because uh 
Yeah, it was my friend Ian when I was in elementary school. And then I remember when I was in uh, middle school, uh, some kids started playing it again. Like, they had, like, a... It was, like, cool for, like, two months to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And then it got uncool again. Like, I remember, I remember, like, everybody was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And just, like, how fads come and go. Uh, I was on the school bus with my friend Clifford. And we were, we were like, the, we had our Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, and we were, like, going through them and showing them to each other and everybody. And uh, this one kid sat in front of us on the school bus, and so he turned around and looked at us. And uh, he was like, oh, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, we're looking through our Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. And uh, he looked at me, and, you know, keep in mind, we were, like, you know, 12, 13 years old here. We were, like, middle school students. And this other kid was just like, Yu-Gi-Oh! got gay. And then he just turned around. And then I just, that was the moment that I knew Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't cool anymore. It was cool for like two months, and then just, it wasn't cool. And then my friend Clifford looked at me, and he's like, Don't worry, Matt, there's still a lot of people that play it. But like, nobody else played it on the school bus, and I never brought my cards to school again after that, because it's like, well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah. Alright, what do we got here? Oh, I can make Metal Zoa. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make Metal Zoa with uh, 3,500 attack. That should be fun. Metal Zoa! Metal Greymon! Sad teching flashback, yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do- Oh, okay, not too bad. I'm still not gonna beat it, but it could have been worse. Yeah, that was back in elementary school and middle school when, like, gay was, like, a standard, like, like- like a curse word, but also just like uh, just a, a statement of just like like any sort of like negative statement would be just like that's gay. Very annoying. Then again, oh here's the bot. The bot is back again. Die, bot, die. All right, there we go. There we are. Neptune. All right. Uh, yeah, Metal Zoa, just destroy it. Whatever it is. Oh, the Beaver Warrior. Banished! They should make a new, um... Because there's so many cards now that bring cards back from being banished. They should make a new zone, which is, like, expunged. You know, or, like, removed from play, where you cannot use it again, no matter what. Um... Uh, no, what about Saga. R.I.P. Louise. Yep, Louise is actually the beaver's actual name. In in Japanese, the card is just named Louise. So that's good to know that we know the beaver's name. And by the way, it's not even a beaver. It doesn't have a beaver tail. It is clearly a rat, but whatever. The bot has been removed from play. Make it the cancelled zone. Yeah, and it should be called the Shadow Realm. That is like, I like the way you think, Jason. Jason with an I. <laughs> All right, yeah, I bet not proceed. Oh, check out this dude, okay. I got spit all in my fucking hand now. Uh, Anubisius is actually a really cool name. That's going in the D&D &D campaign. Like any true homebrew D&D &D world, you just take shit from a bunch of different places and just throw it all together. Anubisius is gonna be in there. I was actually thinking, I was actually trying to find the name of a mummy lord. So the mummy lord is like a really powerful, it's like challenge rating like 50. It's a pretty powerful, like, you know, uh, monster in D&D. Not to be used lightly. I think I'm going to make my uh, my mummy lord in the game named, uh, like, maybe Pharaoh Anubisius or something like that. That'd be really cool. All right, well, we actually do have a monster that benefits from this field. We have Javelin Beetle, but I don't think that's actually going to help because this guy has the perfectly ultimate great moth, and if he summons it on the first turn, we're screwed. Wait, what? Hmm. That's interesting. Wasn't even a trap card. All right, I'm not complaining. Uh, we'll save Sui Jin. Maybe I'll summon the gate guardian this round. Who knows? All right, direct attack. Get that damage in. You know what? Javelin beetle, go for it. Yeah, stab it with your javelin. 
you beetle. You know, you know what? I actually like Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle, the uh, the comic book character. I've always thought Blue Beetle was like like a really sleek design, cool costume, cool power. Blue Beetle's awesome. All right. Uh. Uh. Yeah, I guess just Sui Jin. Yeah. Okay, I think we won. Wow, that's anticlimactic. I love Blue Beetle. Oh, dude, remember Beetleborgs? Big bad Beetleborgs. Big bad Beetleborgs. Oh, and then there was uh, Metallics, Beetleborgs, Metallics. Beetleborgs, Metallics. Beetleborgs, Metallics. Big bad Big bad beetle. Okay. Nothing has seen Phil since me. And then he just passes out from heat stroke. What did we get? What did we win? The key. Nice. Hold on. I just realized something. Hold on a second. The forest shrine. The desert shrine. Valley. Sea shrine. A mountain shrine. And a meadow shrine. The fuck part of Egypt is this? <laughs> no, actually, all of this... Well, okay. The desert, obvious. Um, the jungle or the forest... That forest looked like a thick-ass jungle, okay? I... Mm, maybe up around uh, the Mediterranean, like around the Delta, there might have been maybe a thick forest like that. But I don't know, like, like a, that kind of jungle. That's... Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, the Sea Shrine, sure. Up around the Mediterranean uh, in uh, Lower Egypt, yeah. Uh, the mountain shrine. So, there were mountains, but what was more interesting is that, uh, the Nile River flooded every year. There was a period of insulation with the river, which really helped agriculture in ancient Egypt. Like, seriously, if you were gonna, like, pick a nation that would be, uh, pick a culture, an ancient civilization that would be farming on easy mode, it would be the Egyptians and the Nile. Because the Nile would flood predictably, uh, just enough, not enough to, like, destroy everything, but just enough to, like, you know, uh, fertilize the soil, and it would, like, turn into mud. And the Egyptians didn't even really need to plant things, like, that much. They could just, like, throw the seeds in the ground and just walk over them. And then, like, wheat and barley and, like, sorghum and shit would just sprout. You know, they barely needed to really, like, plant the seeds, because it was so fertile. They had an easy mode when it came to agriculture. But anyway, the reason the Nile would flood every year regularly... And the Egyptians didn't know why. They just assumed it was, like, the gods, like, you know, giving them their grace and their gift. But what would happen was the mountains in Ethiopia, south of Egypt, the mountains got high enough that there would actually be snow. And every year when the snow would melt, it would run down the sides of the mountains in Ethiopia, and that would actually cause the Nile to flood predictably every single year. So there you go. And then the Meadow Shrine. Uh, so... Where are we going next? Oh, I think we're going to the Mountain Shrine next. <clears throat> yeah. Mountain Shrine is next. Um, but yeah, I, I doubt there's any uh, thick-ass jungles like that in Egypt. I congratulate you, but you'll regret that you made it here to the Mountain Shrine. I have a cone for a head. The more you know, yeah. Something else, too, as, as well as we're just going along with ancient Egyptian history. Why not? Um... Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. So, there was a thing called the African Humid Period, or the Green Sahara. So, there was actually a period from... I'm going to get a lot of power bonuses for this one. And uh, Mountain is useless because there's already Mountain. Um, oh, oh, he gets the dragon. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. The history will have to wait a second here. Hold on. Yeah, this will work. This will work. So, um, there was a thing called the African Humid Period that stretched from, like... 12,000, maybe like 10,000 years to go to like, no, 10,000 BC to like 5,000 BC, right? And it was actually a period where the Sahara Desert was, sh it shrank. So the middle part of Africa, if you look at it now, is very humid. That's where a lot of like the forests are in Central Africa. That part actually moved to the north. So when um, the Egyptians, like the other cultures that were getting set up before the Egyptians really had their civilization, like the Badarians and the uh, uh, the Naquata, the, the Naquata civilization, I think it was called. Um, they actually had their civilization in a fairly fertile area. And the hippos and giraffes would actually be grazing in areas that are now just complete desert. 
then around 5,000 BC, or 5,000 years ago, around 3,000 BC, the desert began to, uh, you know, the, the forest began to recede, turning into grasslands and then like, like scrubland and then eventually desert that it is right now. So that's when a lot of these cultures ended up having to flee and the Egyptians were just lucky because the ones that made it to the Nile and settled at the Nile first were lucky because the Nile was like the only hospitable area in all of Egypt and still is in that region because of the Sahara Desert. So the people that got that settled at the uh, Nile got lucky. They were just basically like first come first serve and the other cultures didn't have enough power to overtake them because they had all the water, they had all the agriculture, all the food. And then there are these dying desert like civilizations and tribes that could barely, you know, survive and they eventually all died out or they assimilated with the Egyptians. Uh, the Nubians as well were south of Egypt and they had, um, you know, they had some uh, like agriculture too, but yeah. All right, here we are. I am the protector of the mountains. I am High Mage Atenza. Nice, uh, and that thing just looks heavy. Looks like like 300 pounds of metal you're lugging around on your shoulders, man. Man, you mu he must be completely jacked under that. He just like takes this thing. You have now not witnessed my true power. Ugh! And he just like bulks up like Master Roshi, like Gadoosh. We're not dueling with our decks. We're dueling with our hands. Bring it. I'm like, oh shit. Oh, sex bots are back again. Sex robot. Sex robot. Sex robot, sex robot, coming to your town. Coming to your chat. I told you no! Alright. So let's see here. Uh oh my god. This'll Wow. Well that was easy. Okay. 4,000 attack. Meteor black dragon. Time to beat that. I actually don't think he can beat that without destroying it with like a Raigeki or powering it down with like a Shadow Spell or a Spellbinding Circle or some shit. Oh, yeah. You know, hold on a second. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, Metal Zoe is worth it. Yeah, Metal Zoe is worth it. Well, I can't save now, so I'm just gonna have to just ride it out. This will kill whatever it is. Oh, yeah, Serpent Knight Dragon. Metal Zoa, direct attack. Yu-Gi-Oh, bless you. Can you do that backflip? I actually lied. I don't know how to do a backflip, and I'm not going to attempt that. You know what? Curse of Dragon, get in there. You got the field power bonus. Ooh, punished eagle, but we did it. You, we punished your eagle. All right, fourth. I think we just won. Now, that's not really fair, because we get so many benefits from the mountain field. That is actually one of the easier uh, opponents here. But the next mage... The, uh, the High Meadow Mage. That might be difficult. Jellyfish! There should be a Metal Meteor Black Dragon. Oh, yeah. They actually have a retrained, uh, Meteor Black Dragon. Somebody let me know what it's called. I think it's a Fusion. Uh, but let me know what it is. I got the Millennium Ring. I have it, but it's over there, and I don't want to get up. Ah, oh, my legs are sore. Okay. Uh, how long have we been streaming? Man, we've only been streaming a little bit over an hour. Yeah, so, actually no, it's been probably closer to an hour and a half. Okay, so now we just take on the Meadow Shrine, yep, and that's it. So, uh, the first opponent we're going to have here is the Low Metal Mage, and he is actually, looks like he's wearing tape on his outfit. It looks like his outfit ripped, like the other mages were making fun of him, just like, idiot, huh? Knock him down, he, he like, rips his uh, cow outfit, and he's like, oh, guys, come on, and he, like, tapes it back together. But anyway, Low Meadow Mage actually is the best character to grind against. That came out wrong, but you know what I mean. Uh, is the best character to grind with the entire uh, game because uh, some of the best cards in the game. I think you can win Meteor Black Dragon from him. I think you can win Red Eyes from him. No, I think you can only win Red Eyes from Jono. But you can win a lot of really good cards from uh, Low Meadow Mage, like Dark Magician and shit. Oh, wow, that's a lot of spells. Um, I'm actually gonna use... Okay, hold on. I'm gonna use Mountain here, just because he's probably gonna use Sogan to switch it back. So, should be alright. Yeah, Meteor Black Comet Dragon. Because I have that card. I was looking up uh, the other day. Yeah, I knew you were gonna do it. Okay. 
I was going through my collection the other day, and uh, I found it in there. Just something like that. All right, let's see. Oh, oh, oh! I don't. I, okay, I don't have metal. Okay. Um, it would be pointless to equip him with Mega Morph because if I did end up drawing Metal Morph, he would go back down to three thousand anyway. But I'll, I will equip him with Bright. You know what? We just won't use Metal Morph. We just won't use Metal Morph on Zoa. Oh wait, no, 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 no! Don't, don't fuse the spells. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is how it's done. This is how it goes. I've been listening a lot to Amy Mann lately. Uh, Amy Mann and uh, Bon Jovi has been my musical taste the last couple of weeks for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, front flips are more difficult. I knew a guy in high school that could do, like, multiple back flips in a row. And, oh, dude, he was so cool. He was actually one of my friends that liked anime, too. We would talk about uh, Naruto all the time. I would, like, always lend him my uh, manga, my, my Tonkabons, and read manga. Oh, Millennium Shield. Yeah. There's so many other cards. They, like, Gate Guardian gets a power up from the Meadow Field, and so the High Mage can throw out a fucking Gate Guardian with, like, 4250 attack. It's, like, just disgusting. Um, I like Rustage, if you've ever heard of him. Yeah, I heard him around. Oh! Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing um, a collab with Ohara, actually, this week. Um, I don't know when it'll be up, but we're going to be filming it this Thursday. So, um, anybody who's a fan of Ohara, look forward to that. Pineapples! Oh, what do you got? Oh, Garuzis. All right. How dare you beat my javelin beetle. Summon Pikachu! Pika pee, Pikachu! So I was watching uh, Mewtwo Returns, the like the 3D version on Netflix last night, two nights ago, and um, yeah, that's a. Uh, I prefer the I prefer the one that they sucked all the 90s out of it. I'm just gonna crash. They sucked all the 90s out of that movie, you know. That was what kind of made uh, you know Mewtwo Strikes Back so good. Which O'Hara? Oh, Manu. Yeah. Who's Kaido's baby mama? I don't know. Barry, you'll regret this victory. Barry regrets no victories. All right, here we go. The last of the mages. I am High Mage, Kapura. There are protectors of the light. The owner of the Millennium Puzzle. Our Millennium item is not for the likes of you. It must never be yours. The Millennium Item is Master High Shins and our only key to world domination. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but I've been to the future, like, you know, with Yugi, and uh, you guys don't own shit. It's it's like just a modern world. We, we play cards, you know. We have cell phones, cars, you know. So you guys don't actually rule anything, so sorry to tell you. All right, here we go. I might actually lose this. Uh, because he does have some really powerful cards. Maybe if we get, like, Raigeki at first, uh, it would be good. Summon Utopia. Play Utopia. Ooh, that's not a great first hand. We don't even have anything that get powered up. All right, uh, we need to get rid of all this. Yeah, we need to get rid of all this. Um, what's the highest defense? Launcher Spider. Wait, hold on. Gate Guardian has always moon, so we want, um, Sun beats moon. So nobody has sun though, so redundant. There's a McDonald's here now where this ancient like holy site used to be. So sorry. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the big boy. Oh shit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> And I love how there's no way to negate tra um, traps or magic cards in this game. You can destroy them before they're activated, but there's nothing you can do once they're on the field. Unless with field spells, you can replace. Okay. Hmm. That trap card worries me. But I have an idea. I have an idea. It's not a good idea, but I have an idea. Have you ever been to Texas? No, but uh, my mom has... All right, I did that for a reason just to see what his card was. I had to make sure if it was a trap card or not. No, but my mom has a friend from Texas that's visiting right now, so uh, got to see her again. Um, all right. Oh, boy. 
Uh, we're not doing bad, but we need to get better cards. If we get Meteor Dragon, we might be able to... Oh, even with me... No, Meteor Dragon has Sun. We would be okay. But... Oh, it's gonna be close. Swords Revealing Light kind of smacks. Oh, it does. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, we could summon Metal Zoa, but I don't think he has Sun, even if he does it. Well, no, even if he had Sun, it wouldn't matter. Sun with Bright Castle would only get us to 4,000. Shit. All right, let's wall up. Let's see what this is. Oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, like I said, High Mage Kapura, he doesn't screw around here. Oh, we're dead. Yep, like I said, guys. I forgot to save. 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 You don't say. <laughs> huh. <laughs> All right. Um, where do we leave off? Um, okay. All right. run this shit. Alright, so we did the Sea Shrine, Desert Shrine. What was the next one we did? Uh, doesn't matter. I'm doing them in whatever order I'm doing them in. Okay. But, oh no, we have to do the set of second stuff. Okay, let's just blitz past this. Um, leave shop. Let's just blitz past this. We got this. We got this. We can do this. Alright, here we go. Alright. Alright, let's do this. We got this. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. It's nothing. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish I could speed this up. No. My uh, my Super Nintendo emulator, I can speed up. Oh, and the, oh, the Mage Warrior, too. We have to fight him. I'm the uh, Labyrinth dude. All right. All right, buddy. Get out of my way. We don't have time for your bullshit today. I'm not fucking around here. I'm not screwing around here, okay? We're not playing around. <laughs> it's on now. Yeah, I mean, like, all things considered, it could have been worse. You know, I got seven hours into Xenogears. Yeah. Oh, dude, when I was playing Final Fantasy X a couple weeks ago, I was getting really into it. I must have grinded for, like, five hours in that game, and then I died, and I could not remember if I saved, and I almost, like, lost my shit, you know? Obelisk! Fist of Fate! 
So, yeah, this is, by comparison, not nearly as bad. That's kind of cheating? Kind of, sir. The gloves are off. Boom! Obelisk just punches everything. Obelisk is just walking through the temple, just boom, boom, boom. All right. We got this, don't worry. We're gonna blitz through all this bullshit. Get right back to where we started, it won't take that long. And just as a point, I'm not gonna save. Because if I save, then the game wins. There's Raw. Wing Dragon of Raw! Alright, Labyrinth Mage is down. Clicking intensifies! I kind of miss the old-fashioned joysticks, like the Atari 2600 controller, which is that big red button. Alright, we gotta do this. Get out of my way, Jono. We don't have time for your bullshit today, okay? Right. Right. Left. Right. Giant doorway. Yeah, look, yeah. This will go a lot faster because if I'm not giving you, like, a guided tour of ancient Egyptian history. All right, yeah, 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 that's great, that's great. Himalayan puzzle, blah, 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 yeah, set of, yeah, yeah, you're awesome. You're a weaselly shit. Okay, I get you. All right, great. Okay, cool. Hey there, Tayana. Yeah, that's great. Uh-huh. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like he was, like, pinching her ass there for a second. His arm was, like, in a weird place, and she was like, ow, fuck. <laughs> Dick. Don't touch the lady. It's on. Oh, I should throw the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon in my deck just to fuck with him, but too late now. We're gonna just slice for the Sky Dragon him. All right. Dozed off for a second. Work was tiring. What did I miss? Oh, you missed. Oh, you missed stuff. But now you get to witness the comeback. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. All right. It's on now. Oh, yeah. So uh, great. Oh, God. What was the fucking... What was the... Uh, okay, hold on. When I call out your name, Wing Dragon of Raw! 3D battle. Let's go. Dun, 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 dun. Sex robot. All right, uh, Raw looks like he got a little bit of a dye job. Looks like he went to the hair salon and got a purple hair dye. So that's actually a card called Sky Dragon, I think. Um, so, yeah. Mega Ultra Chicken! All right, Raw. Good job, Raw. That is not a Raw. I get you. That sex bot is real. That sex robot is really thirsty. If you haven't seen it, go check out the uh, WKUK sex robot sketch. It's pretty good. And then they do a commentary on it, which is also pretty funny. All right. Not fucking around here today. Boom. Get wrecked. Direct Raw. And I'm gonna take the god cards out when we get back to where we, you know, left off. I'm just doing this to get through fast. All right, Meteor Dragon. Crap Turtle, go. Not like it matters, but go. Raw, obliterate. Zoa, you fail. What percentage is he crab and what percentage is he turtle? Because I don't think it's a 50-50. That's a fake raw. That is Mega Ultra Chicken, yeah. Ah, not bad, not bad at all. Blah, 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 All right, Tayana, you're great. Yeah, I'm good, he pinched my ass, but it's fine. Let's go, okay, great. He's got a hidden agenda. Yeah, he's a weaselly shit. We already have established this, okay. All right, back to the temples. Go, temple time. Actually, wait, saving time. Make my old mistake. No, not the old card shop. The old card shop, that's now the new card shop. Card shop. Everything's destroyed, yeah, so we can steal the cards. I love that gallon of PC, the gallon of PCP. Yeah, that that was a good one. 
I just realized this was live. Yes, it is. No holds bar. No mistakes. All right, save. There you go. Okay, that's how it works. Excuse me. All right. Mountain! Mostly crab. Only has the turtle shell. Good point. Do any crabs have only one eye, though? Do any turtles have only one eye? 10% crab. Swag cog, I got a racist poop robot once. Oh, God. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the sex robots over the racist poop robot. All right, uh, not a great hand, but it's fine. Metal Meteor Dragon. I love in Digimon, it's just like, Metal Greymon, Metal Garurumon. What are some other metals? Oh, shit. Ah, oh, it's just Parrot Dragon. Ah! I had a parrot when I was growing up, named him Sunny. He was a cool parrot. He's a cool little guy. I never got him to say anything cool. My mom had a parrot named Patches when she was uh, younger, and uh, that parrot actually was really cool. That parrot would actually like land on her shoulder and actually speak a few words. Sunny was just kind of there. Draw. Why did I do that? <laughs> Sangha of Thunder is not a dragon type. I don't know why I did that, but whatever. Metal Mamamon? Metal Tyronomon? I'm not a huge Digimon guy, so I actually don't know a lot of them. Eh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. I don't care. Probably could have gotten rid of uh, Mountain, too. Kaminari attack. <laughs> not like the Kaminari from My Hero. I killed Kaminari. I had a cockatiel named Sunny. Cockatiels are so cool. Every year when I go to Teco, oh, there's Slifer, the executive producer. Uh, every year when I go to TechoCon, uh, there's always um, a booth set up of this like local shelter that deals with like birds, and they always have something like cockatiels and parrots, and like they're they're so cool. Every time in Teco, I always get to hang out there a little bit. Like me and Rustich were talking to him a lot last time we were there. All right. Man, I can't believe I'm going to LA in a month. I'm going to be in an anime expo. I got the badge. Oh my God, it's going to be crazy. I am going to be so out of my depth. I have never been to a place that big. I've been to New York a few times, so I have some reference for it, but it's going to be crazy. But it's going to be nice to see everybody. Um, you know, Noble's going to be there. Rustage is going to be there. I hope Briggs can come. I think Roger might be going. I don't know, but he lives there, so we'll see. Uh, how am I gonna do this? Alright. Our competition. I only watch Digimon Frontier. I love Digimon Frontier. Digimon! Anime Expo. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Hopefully, and so we sent in a thing for any One Piece D&D fans in the audience. Um, Noble sent in a uh, document that basically said, hey, we want to do a panel at Teco, uh, not Teco, at LA Expo, at Anime Expo. We want to do this um, live edition of One Piece D&D. Like, we want to do that in the thing. So we haven't heard back from it yet, um, yes or no. I'm not sure how Anime Expo does it. When I applied for a panel at Teco, um, they did not let me know. Like, they didn't send me an email that said I was approved. They released a, like, schedule, like, two weeks before the con, and it had me on the schedule. So that's how I found out. So maybe they might do something similar with Anime Expo. I don't know. Oh, uh, oh, Sea Dog's gonna be there, and Gigguk is gonna be there. So that'll be the first time I get to meet them. Um, I think that might be the first time I've ever actually even interacted with them. So that'll be cool to meet them if I can. Rustage has met them before, so he can maybe introduce me. Um, but yeah, I live in my little mountain fortress my little country village for most of my life so i'm not very not very acquainted with people can we three can we show 3d slifer yeah absolutely oh wait what oh okay yeah um you can click on the shrines again but nobody's there so whatever okay save remember to save are you looking at Super Chats right now? Not at the moment. I'm looking into getting back up where we left off. So we're pretty close, though. How does he have Slifer? Because I'm the king of games. Duh. 
All right, Meadow Shrine. Okay, we're pretty much back to where we were. All right. Low Metal Man. I just realized he has a silver beard. So, yeah. The fact that Digimon survive, actually survive, is a meme worries me. Huh. Okay, here we go. Uh, here we go. But yeah, uh, I would love to do a live-action version of that game, of One Piece D&D. &D. It's just, uh, we have to wait to hear back. So Noble, whenever Noble hears back, I guess he'll let us know. Yeah, that would be so much fun, though. You know what? I'm not messing around here. Bam. 3,000 direct damage. Suijin, what are you going to do about it, Low Meadow Mage? What are you going to do about it? Nothing. That's what. You're not going to do shit. You're going to give up right now because I got places to be. Like kicking the shit out of your boss. By the by, uh, you can't save in between the Low Mage and the High Mage. Uh, you can go back to the card shop and save after the Low Mage, but you will have to start over from the Low Mage again. So uh, you have to beat both of them back to back. You could have defeated him with uh, the other guy, but whatever. Labyrinth Tank! I love Labyrinth Tank. Look at the drills. There's on drills on top of the drills. Oh my god, another sex robot. Sex robot, sex robot, sex robot, sex robot. Coming to your child. Do you want to get down? Alright, we can do 3D battle with Slifer! Slifer, the executive producer! All right, what does Slifer look like? What do we got? Oh, and this is the Meadow Field or the Sogan Field. You can get to see it. It's way cooler in Duelist of the Roses when there's like, um, well, it's PS2, so it's better graphics. But, uh, oh, wait, hold on. Um, wow, Slifer, um, wow. Slifer really got on in years. <laughs> what sound effect is that? Uh, uh. This is Slifer, you know, in the alternate universe where things don't go too well. Oh! <laughs> it just sounds like... Oh my god. Oh, there's like one tree in the background. Are you banning? How are they coming back? Oh, I'm banning them! I'm removing them from channel. It's just their bots. There's probably a bot to generate more of the bots every time I ban one of the bots. So that's it. All right, there you go. So we only have Obelisk left. I wonder what Obelisk is gonna look like. Slifer got a haircut, yeah. Slifer decided to give up being the Sky Dragon, decided just to be the Crawling Dragon. Uh, retire. You know, he's got a wife and some kids that have grown up. He's got some grandkids. He even got some great-grandkids on the way. Um, you know, he just lives in a Boca Raton. All right, here we go. Hi, Mage Kapura. Rematch, buddy. Let's do this. Come on. I just noticed you have a scarab on your hat. That's pretty cool. I'm going to take that hat after I beat you. All right. Um, should I leave the god cards in? Because this is technically where we left off. Uh, I'll leave Obelisk in because he's the weakest. And after this, we're going to be going into the final boss gauntlet anyway. All right, what can we add in? I like Cosmo Queen. Let's add Cosmo Queen in. And uh, Senjin Yin. Senjin Yin. He's cool. He's like this big Cyclops dude. All right, here we go. Bring it on. I can't save. I can't save in between mages. Oh, oh, this is a way be Oh, this is a way better hand. All right, here we go. Sen Gen Jin. All right, that is the same attack as a Gate Guardian. And Gate Guardian would have Moon, which is strong against Venus, which is we don't have, so we don't have to worry about that. So now he can even power up his Gate Guardian even more. I've seen him do it. He can equip Sword of Dark Destruction to Gate Guardian to be even stronger. So if we have to crash, you know what? I think I'm just going to crash. Fuck it. I'm going to crash with Sen Gen Jin. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, because it's a dragon. Yeah. All right, here we go. Crash time. Bam! Ooh. Garma Sword. All right. Here's another one.
Love this music. Oh, good. Swords of Revealing Light. Ah, uh, we got it. Shut up, sex robot. All right, I think we got this. Uh, yeah. Uh, I actually can make Squid Head of Thunder with... Yeah, why not? We'll just do that. Unless he has another Gate Guardian. Uh, we're still good. Say are you. Say are you is cool. Yeah, how do you like it, huh? The only game where Gate Guardian is useful. Nope, yeah. In the world where all of Yu-Gi-Oh! is reduced to merely Beat Stick versus Beat Stick, Gate Guardian is finally fucking useful. Go figure. Oh shit, now we're in trouble. The Wall Shadow. The Shadow of Walls. Indeed. Alright, what do we got here? That's a trap card. Oh, but we have Raigeki, so pff, solves itself. Da -da 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 -da. All right, even if that's a widespread ruin, which it is not. BAM! All right, we got back up to where we left off. Oh my god, another one! Yeah, there's timeout and hide user. If you hide the user, they get put on the uh, the ban list on the channel, so... Man, the, the sex robots are learning! The sex robots are learning, ladies and gentlemen! Okay, so this is the power of light. I have failed you. Barry, get the Millennium Eye! Who here has been watching since uh, yesterday? Like, who here has been, like, through the like the first stream and then now here on the second one? The journey all the way through. All right, I think we did all the shrines, right? Let's go, save, 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 save. Card show. Me, 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 me. I was here yesterday. I was here yesterday. I was here yesterday. Okay. Uh. John. All right, John. You are now gifted with the power of moderator status. You see any sex robots? Ban them. That's the only thing I want you to do. Okay. So don't ban anybody else. Don't time out anybody else. Anything else, I'll handle it. If you see a sex robot, ban it because it's very annoying. All right, John. You're ordained. There you go. Okay, um, let me leave, actually, let me return to the title really quick. I want to check something from the title. All right, uh, free duel. Let me just make sure I'm not forgetting anybody here. Okay. Oh, wait. Are we missing a temple? Oh, the forest temple. We're missing the fucking forest temple. See, it's a good thing I checked that. All right, yeah, we have to go back and duel Anubisius again. I forgot about that guy. All right, cool. All right, so, yeah, Forest Shrine, that's fine. I was just, yeah, okay, and then there's Seto, okay. And then this is all, these last six place, uh, spaces, all final boss gauntlet, one go, no saves in between. One, two, three, four, five, and then six is the final boss. Duel Master K is just our deck. Um, we just duel ourselves. All right, so that's good to know. All right, John, with great power comes great responsibility, yes, indeed. And then this is the library with the creepy music that I find creepy, but other people find very soothing. Okay, so you can actually look at the 3D uh, models here. Um, like Morphing Jar, for instance. Yep, he's a morphing jar. Uh, but then I also have uh, Obelisk in here, I think. He's, like, right here. There he is, right there. So this is Obelisk. Which is just Dragon Seeker from the game. Which, Dragon Seeker is still a really badass-looking card. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the bots got scared of John. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so these are just, yeah. to show that off what obelisk sprite looks like okay so back to it all right so we have to do the forest shrine and then we are good okay 
Watashi Gakita. Forest Shrine. All right. In the jungles of Egypt. I'm not doing the bit again. I did the bit once. I'm not doing it again. All right, here we go. Trent. All right, here we go. Well, the the card is actually not in the game. They actually had to program it in when they did the mod. So they, they couldn't, like, the people that did the mod probably don't know how to code 3D rendered images of dual monsters. You know? Maybe they could have taken it from a different uh, game, but I don't know. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do the field spell switch strat. Let's see how that goes. Man, John, you're doing your job well. I haven't seen a single sex robot. Yeah, the fort. There you go. Here from the last stream, you're still bad. Oh, I know. I suck at the game. I have to cheat in order to get there, but, you know, whatever. All right. Uh, Garma Sword is the strongest, so let's just go with that. Garma Sword. Garma Sword, I think, as the um, like the original the, the original ritual monster from, like, the tournament packs is, like, really expensive in the real card game. Ooh, Cosmo Queen. I love Cosmo Queen. She is waifu. She is everything. She is queen. Quagar Hercules. Let's see. Yeah. All right, so this is the forest field, which is pretty much like the meadow field, except they actually took some, uh, like, real-life images of a forest and, like, put it on, like, a like a backdrop, which is cool. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Did they make a retrained version of Cosmo Queen? Like, I feel like you could turn her into, like, a Link monster very easily. Oh my god, Spirit Bomb! The Dark Spirit Bomb. Yeah, the sex robots have to get more clever now. <laughs> Hello there, fellow YouTubers and fellow Teching 101 fans. Are you interested in sex today? You know, like, like they have to start getting like, hello there, fellow humans. I am also a human, you know. All right, Garma, slice him up. Slice him. Cosmo Queen is the ultimate MILF. Um, let's see. Nothing major, but let's just throw out. Actually, you know what? Let's throw out Mystical Sand. Let's get, let's have him be crushed by waifus. Oh, that was close, but we did it. Yeah, no, 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 guys. Don't actually, don't actually predict. I think John knows, like, when you start seeing all the stupid emojis and shit, like, that's what a bot is. I mean, it's, they're pretty obvious, but yeah, don't, don't, like, pretend to be a bot, please. Don't. That'll just make things annoying, even more annoying. All right, here we go. Final guy. Anubisius. I am happy that you are the final round. Okay. Here we go. It's on. When is the mow the grass season on? So, my yard... Oh, Super War Lion gets the bonus. Okay. So, my yard living here... Um, it's, it's not, like, crazy big. Which is part of the reason why I moved here, so it didn't have, like, a huge yard. But, um, I only have one mower, and it's an electric motor. Motor. Electric mower. And the battery on it... Oh, shit. There it is. Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. The battery on it is not, um, super... Like, it can't actually last when I mow it. And my front yard is, like, at a 45-degree angle. It's, like, very steep at certain places. So, um, I actually have a lawn guy that comes by and takes care of that. Because I mow the backyard and take care of, like, the, the flower beds and stuff back there. But, um, yeah. The front yard just got annoying. He's actually coming by tomorrow to mow it. And I have... The people that lived here before me, um, they had, like, a lot of, like, landscape shit. And I don't know how to do any of that stuff. Like, landscaping, taking care of, like, exotic plants and shit. I don't know how to do any of that. So, I just hired a guy to take care of, like, the mowing and the landscaping in the front yard. And the people that lived here before me also didn't really... Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, that's not too bad. And the people that lived here before me didn't really take care of the garden for, like, the last few years they lived here. 
So I, I was out there, like, I felt like I was in the jungles of, like, Cambodia, like, ripping out, like, shit in my garden because there was, like, so many dead plants from, like, the previous year that were, like, choking my garden. Um, and they also have... Oh, nice, obelisk. Um, you came when I needed you most. Uh, I need Mars. He does not have Mars. I might have to crash, but... Um... It'll be okay. Metal Obelisk, the Tormentor. Actually, wait, I need I need more cards here. We'll do this. Actually, get rid of Metal Morph. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Summon Cosmo Mommy. She's not gonna be good enough. Boom! You should just use a scythe to mow the grass. I'm out there like like a freaking farmer from Oh, that'll work too. From like a farmer from like the Middle Ages with like a scythe. Yeah. I love how uh, the Kursari Gama, the the chain with uh, the scythe with the chain and the weight on the end of it, that was the ninja weapon, was developed because ninjas were originally just farmers of the oppressed class in feudal Japan and like the Tokugawa, uh, the shogunate, and they actually rose up and they developed um, weapons basically based on farm implements, and the Kursari Gama was one of them. Scything is an art nowadays. Slifer the Sky Dragon, yes. Frankie runs on iOS, changed my mind. Okay. Oh, I should have equipped those to Obelisk to give him 5,000, but whatever. We're gonna win here, it doesn't matter. Oh, shit! Okay, well, that's a good thing I... Well, no, if I would have attacked with Obelisk, I would have won, because they would have crashed, and then Red Eyes would have been able to defeat it. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This will power down po uh this will power down the perfectly ultimate great moth, but it will not affect obelisk. Jam straight. Boom. Gloriosa is Yamato's mom. You know what? I've actually seen that theory a few places. Probably the same place as you saw them, but yeah. Oh, it's Tuesday night. Spoilers might be out for the next One Piece chapter. Do not say what they are if they are. I will check after this. You can tell me if the spoilers are out, but don't tell me what they are. Because John... <laughs> okay, John, if somebody spoils... <laughs> Thank you, John. All right, what do we have? I don't think spoilers are out yet. Oh, they are. They are. Okay. All right. Well, every okay. They're, they're out. If you want to check them, go to the One Piece subreddit. You can check them there. You can read the spoilers. I don't want to see it in the chat, guys. I really don't. Okay? That ruins a lot of people's day, and that's not cool. All right? Don't do it. I'll end the stream. Okay, I won't do that far. All right. I'm, I'm not going to go that far. I'm beating the fucking game tonight, but don't do it. All right, now, um, what's next? We beat Anubisius. All right, now we can start the final boss gauntlet. All right, here we go. It cannot be! It is. Bakura looks a lot like Moses, the Prince of Egypt. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? Holy shit, he kind of does. Fuck, I never even realized that. Barry, you actually defeated the High Mage. Did you really trudge through that whole jungle to get here? So it doesn't matter what final shrine you beat, Seto will appear in the final shrine and be like, hey, you beat the final shrine, congratulations, now you need to go to the vast shrine. Which is where we're gonna head anyway, there's not really anywhere else we could have went, but you know. Alright, now we have to save, 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 save. Barry, thank you for reminding me to save. Save! Yeah. The Epic of Gilgamesh is so cool. The Epic of Gilgamesh is like the source for so many myths later on, it's insane. When was Beowulf first published, or when did, when was the uh, first uh, like the idea when Beowulf was published? Because I was I was thinking about that today, and I forgot. I was gonna look it up, but then I got distracted by something, and I never got around to it. Okay, um, I don't think there's anything else anywhere. One last check, because when we enter the final palace, when we get the vast shrine, there is nothing else. Um. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll don't worry. Out. Okay, there you go. I was gonna I was gonna tell you to, but yeah, there you go. 
Yeah. Anybody that spams like that, you, you get the general vibe. I don't think there's anything else, but I just want to double check. Uh, the old dual ground, I don't think there's anything here. Nothing here. Old card shop. Can I steal that statue? Statue looks cool. All right, and then I don't think there's anything else. Any all the all the other shrines are empty. Shrine of Glory. Is there something there now? There has to be something there. Why else would they program this in the game? There has to be something. There has to be a hidden thing. Like maybe if you collect every single card in the game and you get S text on every single character, maybe then, then the temple will do something. No, it doesn't. The code of the game has been checked, and there's nothing, and, and there's nothing there. All right, let's do it. Fast shrine time. Oh, wait, no, go back. Okay, fast shrine time. Final boss gauntlet. Oh wait, shit. Did I save? Did I save? I can't remember if I saved. Ignore the chance. I, I'm gonna make. I'm not gonna screw this up. I'm gonna save again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You you can also just time people out. Like if it's obviously like not a bot. Like if it's a bot, just ban them immediately. But if if somebody's just like you know spamming the chat a lot, maybe I usually just time them out. Like to give them a warning the first time. Be like, okay, you have your one warning. Don't spam anymore. And if you keep doing it, then you just get banned. You know. All right, here we go. Here we go. Go on ahead. Here. This is a secret passage. I, this is the part in the game I got stuck when I was a kid. I remember this, like, line of dialogue because I tried to beat these uh, mages so many times. I always lost. I must have seen this page, this scene here, like, 50 times. Like, not even exaggerating. And then he goes, the click. Click. There it is, the click. It's up ahead. <laughs> All right. Here we are. The first opponents in our final boss gauntlet. We have these two dudes. We have Sebek the Powerful and Neku the Skillful. So Sebek is a, uh, or Sobek I think is his actual name, is a crocodile god because the Nile River, there was obviously a lot of crocodiles swimming around. So it makes sense that there'd be a crocodile god. And he has a crocodile face. So there you go. I miss uh, I miss Steve Irwin. Does anybody remember watching Steve Irwin back in the day? Dude, I remember being like a little kid, being late at night, turning on Animal Planet, and like watching uh, some Steve Irwin before going to bed. Man, he was he was truly a, he was a great dude. Oh, Obelisk gets the... Oh, yeah. Now, what uh, Sebek will like to do, will throw out Metal Zoa on the first turn, typically. Will be his first lead-in. Um... So, we'll be okay, though. Uh, and Kazijin. Oh, by the way, yeah, all of these final duels, I think most of them will take place on the dark field, which is great, uh, because, ooh, Labyrinth Wall, doesn't matter, bam! Uh, because it's, we're in the vast shrine now, we're in the darkness shrine. So, there we are. Zebek is in this game? Rox is in this game? Crikey! Uh, anybody else get the power up? No. But I have this. Yeah, Sebek the Powerful. I bet you can't stand up to an Egyptian god. All right, there we go. Man, are we getting anything good? Shadow Ghoul sucks. Spirit of the Wind sucks. Wood Remain sucks. Pumpkin sucks. Octoburser sucks. Barox is cool just because he's one of those cards that has like 1320 attack or whatever. All right, I did not put Ron Slifer back in. I'll put them back in for like the final duels. I love those creepy doll statues back there. Neku the skillful. I actually don't know. He looks like a an eagle or a or like a hawk, which uh, or falcon. Falcon is Horus, which would be very important to the Egyptians. But I don't know. I guess he's supposed to be Horus, but Neku. I don't know where Neku comes from. Yeah. Now, the Egyptians had a lot of gods, though. They had, like, thousands of gods. Like, Ra, Osiris, Horus. Those are the famous ones. But, dude, they had, like, little household gods for, like, everything. Um, 
I don't know if the Sogan strat's gonna work on them, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead with um, Sanga. Probably not gonna be strong enough. Now, Neku is skillful, so he'll try to do a little bit more technical kind of stuff. Um, but, we'll see. Yeah, so Skull Knight, like, 2650 originally, Darkfield powers up 3150. Very powerful, but not undefeatable. Uh, I think we do swords. Shing. All right. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got, Neku? Oh, I see. See, he's skillful. Uh-huh. Actually. This. There we go. Good night, Teching. Night, Miley. Miley? Miley Cyrus. Night, Miley. Can I get a Wang Zhi? Wang Zhi? Oh, sweet. We have Dark Magician powered up to 3K. Oh, I get the spell bonus. Oh, Mystical Elf. Nice. I'm actually rewatching. Uh, I got uh, Drifters today um, on DVD on Blu ray. I ordered it and I've been watching Drifters today. It's such a good anime. I love that anime. I'm a history nut, so anything involving history, count me in, buddy. Uh, count me in. I can get a Bakuri box with 3,300 attack. Bakuri box, emerge and attack! Uh, alright, I think we're good here. Unless he has a labyrinth. Oh, rock spirit. Oh, he's like the upgraded form of Hainoa. Drifters is spectacular. I love it. I actually learned a lot, uh, or it got me interested in, in Japanese history because... Like, there's so many references to Japanese history in Drifters. If you don't know it, it's going to be confusing as shit. So when I first watched it, I was like, I don't understand anything. So I, I, that got me interested in going reading about Oda Nobunaga and uh, the Tokugawa Shogunate and uh, the Battle of Sekigahara and everything. So, yeah, go watch Drifters. It might be confusing if you don't know a lot about history, but if you do love history, it's like the greatest anime fucking ever. That's another one that doesn't get a lot like uh, Kota Harano, the same guy that did Helsing. Uh, there hasn't been a new chapter in, like, a long time. Not as bad of a hiatus as Hunter x Hunter, but it, it, there's, like, several months in between chapters. Okay, so those were the first two. Now we're moving on to Hei Shin uh, for realsies this time. We're actually going to have to fight him, and he has the pretty much the same deck as before. I, I, I think he has, like, some cards that are stronger. But this time we have to win. We have to beat him. There is no, um, there's no other way around it. Got to do it. And he's only number three in the six final bosses. So, this is the main villain of the game up until now. And he's only number three in the, in the gauntlet. Okay, what do we got? Um, not great because he is probably going to pull out fucking Gate Guardian. I am getting rid of all these cards. So we need Raigeki. We need Obelisk. We need them for this. And I'm not even going to bother leaving Dark Magician in attack mode. Because he's probably just going to top deck fucking Gate Guardian. And I was right. There we go. Saving. More forgettable than, well, I forgot the example. You can't save here. You can't. If I went back and saved, I'd have to do the whole boss gauntlet all over again. Uh, ooh, good. Uh, that, that, that could work. Uh, so I keep forgetting. We need sun. We need sun for the gate guardian, and we don't have sun. Um, but we have Cosmo Queen with 3,900 attack. That'll, that'll do it. And wait, hold on. Moon is strong against Venus, so we don't want to... Oh, I almost made a mistake there. Oh, but now that we have the other Guardian Star, let me show you uh, Cosmo Queen's other attack. Because depending on the Guardian Star, it'll be a different uh, attack. Let me close this poll, too. This poll ended a while ago. So how's everybody feeling? We're getting near the end of the game here. I think this is a pretty good uh, pretty good thing to do, uh, this Let's Play. I really enjoyed this. Um, we will be doing other Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's Plays. I think I want to do Sacred Cards next. That's a Game Boy Advance game. And I have the emulator for that. That emulator is way easier to work with, so that'll be fun. I might actually be able to use my uh, PlayStation 4 controller on that emulator. Oh, so now it's like an electric Genki Dama. It's like Thunderbolts, like Killua's attack. Yeah. Galaxy Queen. Classic. Ara, 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 ara! She does do the ara, ara, ara. <laughs> 
All right, pretty good, pretty good. Nice, nice, nice. Rita Repulsa. Boom. Now I just got the uh, the Bandora song stuck in my head, which which Bandora is the uh, is Rita Repulsa in the original Zoo Ranger. Tota tota tora, tutu dala tuta lora Bandora. Okay. Oh, uh, I think we're at, I think we're in the clear now. Oh, can I make Red Eyes Metal Dragon? That would be so metal if I made Red Eyes Metal Dragon. Um, I don't think I'll be able to, but let's give it a shot. Nope, no Red Eyes Metal, and that sucks. Red Eyes Metal is so fucking metal. Oh, Meteor Black Dragon. See, High Shin's not messing around. Oh, man, check that out. John is on point, man. I didn't even realize there was a sex robot in the chat, and John was on that shit. John, I know nothing about you, but good job. Have yourself a cookie. Alright, Metal Zoa, not a big deal. Okay, uh, Garden Sword, come on out. Nope. Ara ara! Okay. Garma Sword! Yeah, John is John Cena. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna finish him off here. Yeah, hi, Shin. This is for beating me in the early game. Oh, you have a launcher spider. What a coincidence. I have one of those too, but I didn't summon it. I summoned Super Warline, but still. If you've watched uh, Super Sentai, what's your favorite Super Sentai? I liked, uh, well, Gokaiju was really cool just because it was the anniversary. <laughs> I love this guy's face when you beat him. He's like, what? But uh, I liked Jude Ranger. Die Ranger was good. Eh. Kaku Ranger had an amazing theme song. Kaku Ranger, Ninja, Ninja. Boom. Do, 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 do. Love that theme song. All right. Seto, we have defeated Haishin. Thank you for your help. You were a splendid person here. Nothing like Kaiba from the future. You're a nice guy. Oh no, time to end this farce. Epic music. Wait, this isn't your regular everyday epic music. This is betrayal music. You son of a bitch. All right, well, bring it on. All right, so this is Seto third. Oh my god, the duel's not started. Yeah, we get it. You're evil. You're gonna use the magic on your own because Hai Shin, you just used him as a pawn in your games. Oh shit, what's this? Oh, this is something. This is actually plot related. The Millennium items represent a pack. Okay, so this is before the anime and the manga explored what the actual points of the Millennium items are. Like, what do they do? Why do they exist? How were they created? You know? So this was the game trying to create, like, a backstory on what they do. So, um, what they are is they are basically a pact with, like, an evil devil lord or something from way back in the day, and whoever has the Millennium Items, like, controls this devil lord and sealed him away, and then when you put all of the Millennium Items in the Millennium Stone, the devil lord will come back. So, not really what it is in the anime. I think, actually, what do the Millennium Items do in the anime when you put them together? I think it just opens up the afterlife, right? I think that's what it does. If you put them all on the stone, it'll just open up the afterlife. But then why would... Why did Bakura want them? Did he want to go to the afterlife, too? Or did he want to, like, open hell up or something? I think Bakura just wanted to go back to the memory world to rule the world, but it's just the memory world. I don't know. Yu-Gi-Oh's fucking confusing as shit. Let's just go. Come on. And now, the final battle. I will eliminate you once and for all. The items shall be mine. Oh yeah, that's right. He also controls time, which I'm not even going to begin to talk about how confusing that shit was. Um, they just have power. They just have generic anime power. All right, so it's not a Yami field. That's cool, though. All right, not bad, but he will probably most likely summon Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on the first turn. If he does that, it will probably have Sun, and Cosmo Queen will die. But, oh boy, here it is. 
Oh, okay. It's not... Wow, only a 100-point difference. Holy shit. Okay. So, we managed to avoid that. I need to save that Raigeki because... If I don't have that and he summons Blue Eyes Ultimate, it might be kind of tricky. Even with Obelisk, that's going to be hard. Oh, I hope I don't lose here. I really hope I don't lose here. Seto Third is so hard. But so far, he's not doing much. Okay. Swords of Revealing Light would be really nice right about now. That would really come in clutch right about now. Oh, oh we got Obelisk. Okay. All right. That's not a that's not a hole-in-one, though. Not a hole-in-one. 3,500. Mars. We want Neptune. He does not have Neptune, but Mars is strong against Jupiter. We don't have Jupiter either, so we're good. Get rid of these. Okay. Oh, boy. Now we have a problem. See, I'm worried that if I attack... And he has a uh, widespread ruin that I'm going to die, obviously. But equally so, if I don't attack, he could always bust out a shadow spell or spellbinding circle or something to lower my attack. I think it might be smart... Okay, we're good. I still don't want to waste that Raigeki. But I am going to power a Bobolisk. So even if he powers him down, it'll still be pretty damn... Unless this is a widespread ruin, in which case... Oh, this is a widespread ruin. I'm so fucked. Uh... No! I didn't want it. I wanted to hit circle. I meant to hit circle. I meant circle. Ah! Okay. I meant circle. Damn you. I meant circle. Ah! Oh, shit. All right. Well, that goes to show it's not an easy win. All right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. You look like a confident bastard. I get you. All right, I understand. All right, game over. All right, no, no, no. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. All right. Yeah, this was a uh, this was a uh, a Nuzlocke run of Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, so uh, maybe we should upgrade our deck a bit for the final battle. Let's do it. All right. Um, Obelisk is in there. I gotta keep the Cosmo Queen in there, because, you know, she's Cosmo Queen. Let's get rid of the Gate Guardian parts. Zoe is cool. He can stay. Crab Turtle can go. Sui can go. The Egyptian God Cods. Fuck it. Let's just throw... Let's just have a... Let's just throw Perfectly Ultimate in there. Let's just have fun with it. Why not? It's the end of the game. It's the end of the game. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Fuck it. You know? It's the end of the game. Let's have some fun. All right. We did the boss gauntlet once with our normal cards. See how far that got us. What's the point of having Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragons if I'm not going to use them in my deck? I mean, come on now. Alright, here we go. Seto, I know I'm on to you now. It's like I'm in that movie, uh, Happy Death Day or Groundhog Day. I actually got to meet Punk Satani Phil the other day. I went to a baseball game around here, but Punxsutawney Phil was actually at the baseball game uh, and um, got to see him. He's just, just a groundhog. He was very he was very sleepy. He slept for the most part, but I got a little bobblehead. I got a little Punxsutawney Phil bobblehead. Anybody that doesn't know what Groundhog's Day is, you think I'm just insane right now, but 
It's a holiday we have in Pennsylvania up in Punxsutawney. It's like an hour from here. Uh, it's about a groundhog that comes out. If he sees his shadow, it's six more weeks of winter. That's just, that's just, yeah. That's how it goes. Aw, oh, sweet. Flood's ultimate dragon. 5,000 attack. Oh, yeah. Don't mess around and lose the high shin this time. Don't worry. I got this, guys. Hey, guys, guys. Don't worry. It's me. I got this. I got this, okay? It's fine. Look at that. We got a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on the field with 5,000 fucking attack. We got a, a, a Cosmo Queen with 3,500 attack. Like, there's nothing he can do. Like, literally, I just destroyed his Millennium Shield. Sobek is worthless. Look at this. I took out half of his life points in one attack. Over half. We're fine. We're fine. Overconfidence is the best confidence. All right? And now look, we got a Dark Magician with 3,000. There's literally nothing he can do to stop me. Super War Lion, get that shit out of here. Cosmo Queen, wipe him out. Cosmo Mommy. Oh, another mechanical chaser. Woo! Curse you, Barry. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. I have a beak. Blah, blah, blah. Let's do it. I just thought of an idea when I duel Seto. I just thought of a card I'm going to put in my deck when I duel Seto. I already have Blue as Ultimate, but I thought of another card that will actually be very appropriate. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep Zoa. He's powered up. All right, now just remember, when you want to hit Circle, hit Circle. Actually, I don't think Metal Zoa gets the power up. I don't think he's He's not a fiend. He's a he's a machine. Hence the metal. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, Neku doesn't have really strong abilities. Doesn't have really strong cards. The Dark Sage! No, I actually don't have Dark Sage in this, unfortunately. Dark Sage is a what? Oh, okay. Dark Sage is a really weird card where um the only way to see, it is one of the, I think the only monster card that's summoning is left completely up to chance because it's summoning condition is you have to play Time Wizard with Dark Magician on the field and Time Roulette has to be successful. So you have to do the coin flip correctly. So the summoning of Dark Sage is dependent entirely on a coin flip, which I, I think it's the only monster that requires that. Garma Sword, go. I think we got it. I think we got him, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, Kaze Jin versus Kaze Jin. Alright, Neku's down. Alright, we're getting close. The only thing annoying is we have to sit through that cutscene again with Seto Third. They put that cutscene right before Seto Third because they know that people are going to get killed by Seto. I think Seto Third might actually be the hardest person in the game. There's Nightmare and Dark Knight after him, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure... Uh, Seto Third does have the... I mean, he has the blue as Ultimate Dragon, and I don't think the final two guys do, so... Yeah, okay, Haishin. We already know you're not even, like... This is like a Naruto, Kaguya, Madara, Black Zetsu situation where you're, like, third down on this row. You're the Madara of the fucking game. Seto Third is the Black Zetsu of the game, and then Dark Knight is the Kaguya. So, you're ranking way down here. And I got a slide for the Sky Dragon on my first draw, so you are so dead. Yeah, he's actually the Dark Knight, although it's spelled D-A-R-K-N-I-T-E. So, spelled not the correct. Oh my god, gee. You know what? I'm just gonna fill out my board and then just... Actually, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna destroy you. BAM! I almost... I almost one turn killed him there. FTK'd him. Jesus. Launcher Spider. Down. All right. Here we go. <sighs> I love how people are just having conversations about like, wait, what? It's a groundhog? What is the, the, the shadow? Okay, guys, I'll make it very simple for you. It's all bullshit. All right. They take the groundhog. They're special groundhog handlers. They get to wear really fancy suits and white gloves and top hats. And they take a groundhog out of his burrow. 
and they talk to him in a special groundhog language, and then the human decrees from a fucking magic scroll that Punxsutawney Phil did or did not see his shadow this year. It's bullshit, but it's kind of charming, like, hometown country kind of bullshit. <laughs> no, it's not true! Phil is a magic groundhog that's been alive for 85 years, and he has determined... GET HIM! Uh, 1k viewers. Yeah, well, actually it says 986 for me, but yeah. Alright, we get it, Seto. You're evil. Yeah, you want to take over the world. Seto, why do you want to take over the world? Like, why the fuck do you want to take over the world, man? You'd constantly have to worry about people trying to kill you. You'd have to manage economics. Like, what would you even do? God. Alright. Uh, the card I wanted to add is actually... I'm gonna take out Magical Labyrinth, because it's not really doing anything for us here. I'm gonna throw in... Um... Crush card. Yeah. The Crush card virus. That's a fun one to play. Okay, here we go. Oh my god! You are so... Actually, you know what? Uh, Sun is beaten by... Mercury. Oh, Obelisk has Mercury, but uh, that wouldn't work. You know what? Slifer. But, you know, that also makes me think that the, uh, the Council of Punxsutawney... The ones that decide on, like, you know, if, if he sees his shadow or not. I wonder if they just spend all year sitting around rooms and, like, having meetings with each other to be like, all right, guys, what's, what's, is it going to be six more weeks of winter or early spring? And they spend 12 months of the year, 11 months of the year trying to decide on which one's it going to be. Because it's, it's almost always six more weeks of winter. It's almost always six more weeks of winter. I think it's only happened, like, twice in my lifetime where he's decreed, um, you know, early spring. There was one actually a couple years ago that he did. But, you know, it's Pennsylvania, so it's it's six more weeks of winter. Probably more like ten more weeks of winter if we're being honest with ourselves, but yeah. Alright, Seto third! Take it down! Alright, I think I might have gone overpowered with him. I uh might have went a little bit I love how that was like the heart the hardest duel in the game, and I spent most of it talking about a damn groundhog. So there you go. <laughs> hey, I was pissed, man. Not like this. Not like this. Oh, don't destroy the items. They're mine. I don't want to destroy them. Hold it right there! Hi, Shin. What are you doing? Hi, Shin! Come on, man. That's not cool. Put the knife down. Don't kill Seto, please. He's such a... Such a nice, likable guy. Why would you... Alright. Here we go. Ha ha ha! I did it! They're mine at last! Now I can summon the Dark Knight! I'm gonna summon Batman. K6 Scope made that joke in his Let's Play. I made it in my first Let's Play. We get it, okay? Dark Knight, Dark Knight, different Dark Knight, alright? Jafar is summoning Batman. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Holy shit! Ancient Egyptian Batman! That beard is epic. He's got long flow. He's got like uh Izumi Zoldic hair. Ilumi, sorry, not Izumi. Who's Izumi? I don't know. But Ilumi. Yeah. I command you to obey me. <laughs> I've returned after thousands of years, and what do I find? You command me to what? I command you to do the hokey pokey. I've made no pact with the likes of you. Why should I be compelled to obey you? The items, the Millennium items, I have them all. The Millennium items, I see no items. Of course you do. I use them. I use them to summon you. And now you honor the pact. You must obey me. I switched their voices there. Sorry. I 
weary of this I think you missed a word there. I grow weary of this conversation. No! Don't! Don't pinch my ass, Dark Knight! Oh, he turned him into a card! Help me! The noisiest card I've created. Oh god, now he's just shitting on him. The ugliest one, too. Oh god, now he's burning! No, Haishin is dead! So Haishin's just fucking dead now, I guess. Yeah, I just killed him, wow. Seto's in the corner, like, I don't even know how to respond to this situation. Barry, your deck! It still contains the Millennium card! The card you used to return to this world! They do? Well, that's cool. That's, that's a plot convenience, if nothing else. So yeah, I have the cards now, bitch. What are you gonna do? You're gonna listen to me, and I command you to do the Hokey Pokey. We still hold one card that represents our pact with you. Oh, I see that you do. But I don't intend to go back empty-handed after coming all the way there. I'll tell you what. I'll give you one chance. <coughs> Bullshit. I'll only fare... Uh, blah, blah, blah. So it, was the, it comes down as if with anything else in the world. It comes down to a duel with a children's card game. All right. So, here we go. So Jafar and Orochi share a voice? Absolutely. Oh, I should, uh, when he transforms, I'll use Orochi's voice. That'll be fun. Oh, and there's Raw and Crush Card and Metal Force. Metal Morph. But, yeah. We're not playing around, though, so let's just summon Raw. Mega Ultra Chicken. Get your game on. He plays Raw, too. Shit. Okay. I think the strongest card he has is Gate Guardian, but he might have uh, Metal Morph. Actually, well, I'm going to play Perfectly Ultimate here first. And then I'll use Crush Card next turn. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, so Black Skull Dragon. Yeah, it's nothing we can't deal with. He does have a second form after this, which is more powerful. Oh, boy. Imagine Crush Card as a spell. Oh, yeah. It'll be something like this. Snipe. Bam. Dead. The greatest devil lord ever. Man, even he gives us shitty cards. He gave us fucking Rogue Doll. Oh, he gave us Crimson Sunbird. I guess that card's okay. Faithless Mage is alright. That card sucks. Togex. Togex. Fucking Togex? Are you kidding me? God. This is not fair. Me? I cannot lose. I created the cards. Therefore, I am greatest at them. I cannot lose! I am Lord Orochi! Come boy! One more time! One more game! So this is Nightmare, who is the final boss. Togex! I cannot believe this! You know what? You know what, motherfucker? You wanna play this Togex game with me? Oh, Mystical Sage, get out of here. I'll show you. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You know what? Actually. Yeah. You wanna play this game with me? Show you Togex. I'll ram this Togex up your ass. Alright. Still better than Doom Donut. Oh, yeah. Pretty good hand, but I don't see any Togex. The final battle between good and evil. And I'm on a mission, damn it. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Come on, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All bullshit cards. Don't care. Yeah, I don't even care about Bright Castle. Don't give a shit. Whatever. Twin Headed Thunder Dragon. Get out of here. Launcher Spider 2700 attack. Fine, whatever. Yeah! Oh, I crashed! All right, well, okay. So I guess Nightmare does have Blue Eyes Ultimate. But you know what? Don't matter. Because you know what I got? Fucking Togex. Oh, you got a perfectly ultimate great mod. That's fantastic. Is it greater than a Togex? I don't think so. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, it's still not here. Uh, sun and sun, so... Oh, wait, no, it's, uh, yeah. Ugh. 
What do you got? Nightmare. Nightmare! The epic battle for good and evil. There it is. You wanna play my game? You wanna play this game? You son of a bitch! Togax! Ugh! Oh, you're attacking Togax? Oh. Alright, I see where it is. I see what it's all about. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, it's not going- it's not ending this way. We're not going out there. wait, what? Wait, what the fuck?! What the hell was that about?! Whatever. Alright. It's not going out like this. Get out of here. Curse of- so that was the ritual spell for the Millennium Shield, which had really badass artwork, by the way. So yeah, I knew you could fuse spells, but I didn't know that was one of them. Where is it? Oh, double Togex! Oh yeah, you know what? You know what? Megamorph the Togex. For more Togex action. Next turn, you're going down, bro. I'm gonna Raigeki your field, and I'm gonna kill you with Togex. I'm gonna summon two Togexes. Just because I can. Well, I can't, because I have to use Raigeki. But! It's on now. TOGEX! WE DID IT! Woo! Ugh, like two hours ago, Tekken choked about fusing Metal Morph. Well, I guess I stand corrected. Oh my goodness gracious, we did it, guys. Now back to the shadows with you. No! Not again! No! Heh. <sighs> No! Okay. Well, that was easy. All right. He couldn't stand being defeated by Togex. It was just too much. Oh, come on. Yugi, pick up Seto's hat. It's a cool hat. I mean, the guy was a dick, but he had a cool hat. That day, Seto left the ruins, never to be seen again. He married some lady with eyes of blue and white hair, and apparently they had kids. Egypt was unified under one king, Barry, the protector of mankind. He ordered the forbidden rooms to be buried. Barry became the greatest of pharaohs, bringing prosperity across all he ruled. See? Barry, you're part of ancient Egyptian history. Ramsey II. <sighs> Pharaoh Barry was the greatest of all time. The vile mages were no more, so I guess we killed them? I guess that's what that implies. U G O. Uh, uh. And that is the game. Oh well, thank you for asking me to save at the very end. You're very, very grateful. Awesome. Uh, that is a code that'll work for Duelist of the Roses, but I can just go back and check the footage. So if I want to use that for that, it's fine. So here we go. That was it. That's the game. Uh, not bad. Uh, the ending credits will showcase all the different, uh, the wire structures for the 3D modeling. Um, I don't know how 3D modeling works, but it looks kind of cool. I think that's, uh, Horn Imp, I think. Yeah, I think that's Horn Imp, which is a card we actually did have at the beginning. Uh, that's Horn Imp again. So we're, we're just gonna focus on Horn Imp. I love this, I love the ending theme, though. It sounds like, uh, like some, like, Renaissance music kind of, kind of jazz. Why is he pelvic thrusting? Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Ah, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> um, that is, um, oh, that's Crow Goblin, I think, or, like, uh, Book Wisdom or something. The Master of Books, I think, or the Keeper of Books. That's, uh, that's another card. Uh, that is, um, I don't know, actually. Somebody, Knife Man! Knife Man! Uh, that is... Oh, uh, Ancient One of the Deep Forest. Yeah, the one of the, um, I think the low meadow, uh, the low forest mage used him, um, in the duel. Yeah. Man, this wire framework looks really cool. The highest 1990s technology could offer. That is, um, I don't know. Don't know what that is, actually.
Oh, oh, that's, uh... That's the Oscillo, like the Watt kid that we had at the beginning of the game. Oh my god. So many memories, guys. So many memories playing this game. What the fuck is that thing? It looks like a virus. Alright, weird. Alright, so uh, that was Forbidden Memories. I want to kind of... So I'm a big fan of Simo's uh, progression series for Yu-Gi-Oh, right? And uh, I watch all of his series that he does, and like the uh, Sealed Showdown and everything. Um, and so I thought it would be cool to do like a progression series kind of thing, but with the video games. So Forbidden Memories, I think... It was Forbidden Memories and Dark Duel Stories that I think were released like the same week or the same month in North America. But I tried to play Dark Duel Stories. It's a Game Boy Color game, and it sucks. It is so primitive. The soundtrack alone, like the sounds alone, were giving me a goddamn headache playing it. So, yeah, we're not doing that. Um, but the next game, I want to play, uh, I want to jump over to the Game Boy Advance and play Sacred Cards. Because that's like a story-based game where you actually play as your own character. And you can, like, meet Yugi and Joey like you're a member of uh, the Battle City. So it's like it takes place during Battle City. So it's like a retelling of Battle City, except instead of Yugi being the protagonist, you're the protagonist. And you, like, duel, like, Merrick at the end and shit. So I, I want to do Sacred Cards, definitely. Um, there's also one on the Xbox that I own that I want to play. And uh, Duelist of the Roses, which is a very different kind of game. Uh, it's more of like a chess game kind of thing. So it's very different. And the duels go for way longer in Duelist of the Roses. But the game all overall is very short compared to this game. So yeah, um, that's Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. It is just about midnight. It is midnight, exactly. So I think I'm going to call it a night. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to John for helping me out with the mod stuff. Um, yeah, this was a good one. Um, I don't know when the next one will be. Uh, it'll be basically just when I plan it. Uh, oh, okay. How about one more for the road, John? There we go. Thank you, John. Let's give a hand to John. You know, no more sex robots around these parts. You know, the final bot. Okay. Well, anyway, oh, yeah, in the World Championship Series, I want to try that out, too. So, yeah, uh, this was a lot of fun. I love to do Yu-Gi-Oh! content on the channel and the video games. I'm a big fan of a lot of them. So, uh, yeah, you all have a good night. Have a good evening. Have a good morning. Have a good 4 o'clock in the afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Probably 4 o'clock in the afternoon somewhere. All right. I'm going to get going later. And remember... Always trust in the heart of the cards, or cheat, whichever. Later.